everyone doing on this fan fucking tastic Friday chat? I'm a little bit late. I know I'm a little bit late. My apologies. Show us your tattoo. Shut the fuck up. I'll get to it. Okay. Uh, I'm a little bit late. You know, uh, how to eat some dinner. Also, uh, started setting up stream and went, oh my God, I have to take a fucking shit. Uh, chat, relax. Oh my God. It's like you guys are fucking fiending to see the tattoo. Jesus, man. Forgot you got a tat? Yeah, I know. I'm going to show you. I'll show you guys the tat, but it's covered in a saniderm, which is like the film they put over it. So should I also just show you guys a picture? I'll show you guys a picture as well. Just because when you see it, like the ink kind of bleeds through slightly. So it's just going to look like it's still going to look, in my opinion, good. But it's like you can't really see the tattoo fully because it's kind of covered. Okay, hold up. Chat, we'll fucking get into the stream. You guys are freaking the fuck out. I'll show you guys the tattoo, and then we'll fucking get into it, okay? Well, wild jail for the five gifteds. Dub in the chat for that. Thank you for gonna stop. Thank you for the fucking five gifteds, buddy. God damn. Off ripping the fucking stream, too. Hold up. Let me get the picture ready, too. Brother. Okay, here we are. Now, okay, let me actually show the picture first. Because when you see it, you're gonna it's gonna it's not gonna be as hype, right? Because it's covered. Bang! Look at that shit. Look at that shit. I had to sit for three hours for that bitch. That was a pain in the fucking ass. I think it looks good. Uh, but uh, here's the here's the fucking tat. It's just like you see it. Hold up. Let me zoom. So it's like you you can sign it. You kind of see that the fucking ink bleeds a little bit because uh, it, the tattoo has to fucking stick. But I think it looks pretty fucking sick. But um, uh, yeah, no, I like it. I fuck with it. I fuck with it. W tat. Yeah, I didn't get the other one. I didn't get the other one because we sat down, and I got there about like four, and she started tattooing. She started tattooing me at like four thirty. Bro, an hour... Keep in mind, the entire tattoo, I am laying like this. At one point, swear to God, I thought I, fall, I fell asleep. Uh, what's the meaning? Memento mori in Latin means remember you must die or remember death. It's like a stoic phrase. Uh, it's usually followed up with like carpe diem, which means seize the day, or like amor fati, which is uh, love of fate. Somebody said boring. Yeah, sorry. I should have gotten a fucking Fortnite tattoo. That would have been more interesting. Maybe if I got, like, uh, the OG John Wick Reaper skin, that would have been a bit cooler. If I just got a realism version of that, that might have been that might have been a better idea, you know? Yeah, I would have wanted to have that on my body for the rest of my life. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I should have gotten... I should have gotten a fucking live image of Ninja hitting the fucking gritty or the floss and then just gotten that on my fucking whole back. Uh, anyways, I'm sitting down for the tat. It's a react day, by the way. We'll fucking get into that in a minute. I'll read the donos in a minute as well. I'm sitting down for the tattoo. And, um, she asked me, like, if I wanted, uh, what's it called? Like, if I wanted the full, how do I, how do I explain this? So they, they basically give you, like, a bunch of images, like, and you pick which one you want, and I picked this one, and then I also picked the size, and she added all these, like, the stems, as you can see, with, like, the leaves on them, uh, which I liked, and I think they look good. Uh, I'm wondering to see how it'll heal, obviously, because a fresh tattoo always looks a little bit different. I really like the text. I think the text is fucking on point as well, uh, and I think it matches the tattoo a bit better. I asked her to go darker than normal. Um, and the reason it's, I, it, the, the roses are there, by the way, is I saw one that looked like this and I was like, oh, that's fucking sick. So I gave her this idea and she tweaked it a little bit, made the roses look a bit, a little bit different, but, um, basically it's one alive rose and then a wilting rose. So it's just fucking showing death. Most people get a skull with memento mori. And I actually thought about getting that, but I just didn't want that anyway. Also, you could see all the hair sticking up on my fucking arm. Uh, anyways, um, I'm sitting there for the tattoo. An hour and a half in, like, I can't even see the tattoo, right? Because it's on my fucking, the side of my ribs. And she's like an hour and a half in. I'm like, oh, surely we're done soon, right? I look up. She has only done the this rose. And I go, 
and I'm like, bro, it's not even that it hurt. It's like, it's just, I was sitting in such an uncomfortable, my, both of my arms were numb. I, at one point I was sitting like this and like my, I was sitting like this and the blood just wasn't going to my hands. And I felt my shoulder like this with my one hand. I didn't even feel it on my fucking arm. They were that numb. Somebody said horror, please. We're doing horror games, uh, Monday and Wednesday. So you can fucking wait for that, buddy. It's react day today. Today's reacts tomorrow's VR. We might do some horror VR, uh, tomorrow actually. Sunday's reacts. Monday is going to be uh, MC Horror Mods and uh, maybe Switch Games. Tuesday is going to be South Park Snow Day. Wednesday is going to be Horror Games. Thursday is probably going to be Fortnite and then Games with Other Creators. Friday reacts. But yeah, if you have any videos you want me to react to or games you want me to play, video discussion, shop, game discussion, that. Back to the fucking story here. She's, she's tatting me and it's fucking, you know, it, like I look down at it. I'm like, oh, this looks good. I have to take a massive piss. And I'm like, can I go run to the bathroom real quick? And she's like, sure. I fucking go take a piss, and as I sit up, I got so fucking lightheaded because I was just laying on my back. I was like, bro, and I was starving the whole time. I didn't eat anything before, which is also, like, really advised against because some people pass out if they don't eat a lot of shit before they get tattooed. You're not supposed to eat directly before, but you're also not supposed to not eat, and I ate, like, four hours before I got the tattoo and then sat for a fucking three-hour tattoo, but... It wasn't that bad. The only thing that really hurt, like, it was like a three to seven pain. I thought the ribs would be worse. Up here didn't hurt at all. It kind of, I don't want to say it felt good because it didn't, but it was like a vibration that wasn't bothersome. This fucking blue. What the hell did I just zoom in on? Was that my armpit, bro? That, yo, that looked like a fucking asshole for a second there, dude. That that's like <laughs> I was trying to zoom in on the text, it zooms in my armpit. I'm like, bro, why does that shit look like a fucking asshole? Um, anyways. Uh hold up, let me actually yeah, I have to fucking control zoom and then scroll. Um yo, that was fucking hilarious. Uh I get the memento mori. Right, and how they do text tattoos like this is they have to fucking go over it, right? Like, they outline it, and then they fill it in. But then they have to go over the already raw skin again, usually, like, two or three more times. Or not, like, two two more times, like, one or two more times, right? So they go over it, they fill it in, and they have to do it again, right? So the ink sticks. And when they go over an already tattooed tattoo, it hurts like a fucking bitch. Because it's already raw skin, and so they're just going over it again and again and again. And that's when you start sitting there and you're like, but I can't cave, you know, because then I'm going to look like a fucking pussy. Right. And then I'm going to, and then I'm, then they're going to make fun of me. So, so I was like fucking sitting there. I'm like, nah, it don't hurt. <laughs> nah, it don't hurt. Nah, it, don't, it doesn't hurt at all. Uh, it, but honestly, I don't think tattoos hurt that bad. Like I've had, I honestly, my legs were worse. In my opinion, I think everybody has a spot that they get tattooed that hurts more than others. What I will say is when I see the videos of people getting like forearm tattoos and they're like passing out and shit, like you must have the worst pain tolerance in the fucking world. Like if you're going to get a forearm tat, like this shit didn't hurt at all. Like they filled this in with like a fucking big mag because it's just like they use multiple needles at once. Didn't hurt at all. And it, like I'll see videos of people getting those and they're like, fucking sitting there like they're getting like stabbed uh the dredge for the three uh been watching you on youtube for a few months uh first time catching you live by son introducing me to your content well duh uh welcome to the stream rizzy cuban mutt and muffin for the seven eight for the thousand buddies work at wow wow what's your order i mean i change it every time usually i'm getting a sub or like a uh like a buffalo chicken sandwich uh charlie for the three have you heard about bruno mars is apparently having 50 million in gambling debt bruno mars is a gambling addict no shot Urban David and Zembles for the sub. Is that for the thousand biddies? Uh, uh, what's up, Joe? Got two new tats. Hunter X, Hunter Spider tattoo on my knee and, and knee and an eight 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 on my wrist. That's dope. Banana and water for the sub. Aiden for the four. First dono also W tattoo. Sandwich the chicken infinity infinity crummy wild jail for the five gifted again. Derek, uh, big Mike dropper for the sub. Charlie for the three. Justin eight for the sub. Floating for the three. Uh, fact of the day nineteen. New Zealand is the most tattooed country in the world. Really. <sighs> I mean, is that surprise? Does that surprise me? What do you think the mo what do you think the second most tattooed country in the world is? 
most tattooed countries, not the U.S. Italy, all Italy and Sweden. Italy, 48% of the population has at least one tattoo. You never really meet somebody that has one tattoo, though. Who, if you have a tattoo here, how many tattoos do you have? Usually, like, you might have one, but I feel like most people that have one tattoo have many. Unless it's, like, a really meaningful one tattoo. Chat, I said, if you have a tattoo, how many do you have? And then you say zero. That's, like, the whole point of me saying if, right? Meaning you just don't type anything. But it's okay. You want to be included. I No, that's fine. You're allowed to say zero if you don't have one. That's fine. That's fine. You know, you can say zero if you don't have a tattoo. You know, you don't, I don't want you to feel left out. Blizzard for the sub, captain for the sub, polar for the three. Fiddle sub to strawberry tabby after you saw the jiggle machine. <laughs> to Bart for the sub. Um, Leo for the sub, the dredge for the three. I already read that. World for the three. Tabby is live, so I got to go think. I got to go. I think it's jiggle machine day. Bro, stop. Schmort for the sub, formidable for the three. I'm going to lose all my viewers to the jiggle machine. I went blind getting my first tattoo on my inner forearm because my blood pressure dropped like a rock. There are some people that just can't do, like, needles. Like, I have a friend that, like, whenever he even just gets, like, a shot, he, like, passes out. Ethan for the three. Can you unban me? Dude, you're not banned if you type. You're asking me to unban an account that wouldn't be banned. Oh, it is banned. I don't know why you got banned. Oh, you were making fun of a fucking animation. That's not bad. Cannon the dredge for the sub show, E for the three. Just got out of track practice. My calves are killing me. Uh, sorry, your note if uh, wanted to tap in and say what's up. What's up? Muffin for the three. RJ and Nad for the sub. Charlie for the three. Are you a big fan of the government? Bro, stop asking me this. Stop asking me this. For the love of God, stop asking me that stupid fucking question. Oh, my God. And, then, and here's where my whole chat starts spamming it. Come on. Yeah, every, chat, get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. Are you a big fan of the government? Yep, here we go. Come on. Type it. Just get it out of the way already, right? I wanna, I wanna fucking. I haven't even announced. Oh, what's up, JoJo? Oh, what's up, JoJo? How's it going, man? Haven't seen you in a while. Concrete for the sub. When are we gonna fucking stream together, JoJo? It's like uh, you're never live when I'm live. Now you go live at fucking 5 a.m. But he's a rising grinder, I guess. JoJo's live at fucking crack of dawn, playing uh, goddamn uh, fucking. I don't even know what you're playing now. What are you playing? I don't know what you're playing. I, mi I dude, I miss you at this time slot. You're not here anymore. It upsets me. Strawberry Tabby's in my stream. Is she dead ass in my stream right now? Ask her if I should get a jiggle machine myself. Do you think that would increase my view count possibly? Oh my god, she is watching my stream right now. Oh my god, everybody act natural. Everybody act natural. Holy fuck. I think I need to get a jiggle machine though. I think that would increase my followage. Maybe make it a channel point redemption. Something like that. 500,000 channel points minute on the jiggle machine. She said I should get one. I will. I don't even know what you, what do you buy for a jiggle machine now? Do I just look up jiggle machine? Let me look it up. Jiggle machine benefits. Oh, it's just a, it's called a vibration platform. $300. Chad, I might just have to twerk. Fuck, dude. $300 for a jiggle machine? It's worth it? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> he tanks that. <laughs> oh, my God. That's nothing for you? Yeah, but it's fucking $300 for a jiggle machine. When am I ever going to use that outside of the, the channel point redemptions? What am I going to just sit there in my free time standing on the jiggle machine? Ethan for the sub, sick for the three. One of my first streams usually uh, watch the vibe. I want to say you helped me with a lot. I was struggling a lot with my mental health. Well, I'm glad I was able to help, Stick. Uh, and I'm sorry, um, like, you're going through that, man. I mean, I'm glad my content has helped you in any way that it has. But uh, I don't want to, like, take credit for that in any way. Uh, I hope you're doing better now, though. Floating for the three. Got a tattoo that says, Life is the art of dying on my forearm. And it didn't hurt at all. My ankle, however. It's usually, like, thinner skin or, like, the, the under parts of your body. Like, if you get something here... It's going to hurt, but if you get something, somebody already flex. Dude, I'm losing weight, man. If you get something like, if you get something like on your back where it's like fatty, that could hurt some people more than others. 
but if you get something on like this part of your arm, it's not going to hurt that bad. Arrow and Shelly for the sub. All right. She said she wants to see a big guy jiggle and do ASMR. I've done ASMR before. Anybody remember the goldfish stream? I've eaten. I can do ASMR right now. Hold up. Let me turn my gain up all the way. <coughs> I feel like it's too high. Is it too? Can you guys hear me right now? What do I? What do you even say when you're doing ASMR? Should I like blow my nose or something into the into the into the mic? Start role playing. What the fuck does that even mean? Spit on the mic. Stop. We're done. It's over. It's over. It's over. Kid told me to spit on the mic. It's over. Not doing it anymore. Fuck off. <laughs> it's, you ruined it. You ruined it four seconds in. Four seconds in, you ruined it. Salty for the sub. Arrow and Shelly for the sub. All right. Well, let's get into the reacts here today, chat. It's a fucking react day. Uh, Concrete for the three. She said she wants you to do the sexual ASMR, like licking the mic and stuff. I would have to buy a different setup. I would have to have a whole fucking, I would have to have a whole different setup for that shit. I'd have to fucking buy that, what is that Amaranth mic that she has? And she had two of them there, and she would just loop that shit for like three hours and lick the mic. Why do people watch that? I don't, like, I could, I, I understand people watching like fucking Fortnite gameplay in the corner, and then there's like the woman on the side or something, but like, I would not want to watch somebody lick a mic. Like, I feel like it's not even, it's not even like, I don't understand any ASMR for that matter. Like, is there any ASMR that you guys find satisfying? The slime, the slime. You know, the videos on TikTok where it's like a, it's like a tub of slime and they'll go and like smush into it. That's satisfying. Or they scoop it and it's like the, the, and it's like, uh, it looks like it's ice cream, but it would, it has chemicals in it and you'd probably die if you ate it. That. That's satisfying. When they scoop that shit, fuck with that. Nick for the sub, the dredge for the three. Uh, villain for the sub. All right. It's a react day today, chat. Let's, let's, let's give it a rundown. Let's give it a rundown on the videos that we're watching. Which high school couple will get $1,000? Cut video. I snuck into Bohemian Grove. Chat, if I'm wrong, isn't that the, um, the Illuminati, right? The Illuminati area, or am I crazy? It's something with a bunch of rich people. Bohemian Grove, stupidest reasons people call 911 for. Why kids don't go outside anymore. The D'Amelio experiment failed. Now they won't go away. The cruelest episode of Deal or No Deal. And every drug explained in 10 minutes or less. That is the rundown of today's reacts chat. Whether or not we get through all of them, I'm pretty sure we will. If anything, we might have to add a video or two. We'll see. Frickin' for the sub, Molly for the three. Golden birthday today. Uh, thanks for streaming and helping me stay positive. What do you mean golden birthday today? Oh, oh my god, sorry. Just ate dinner before I went live. Um, But yeah. Golden birthday today? Does that mean it's your birthday or your dog's birthday or something like that? Happy birthday to whoever you're talking about. Freaking for the sub. Big Mike for the three. I'm high as fuck at my friend's house and I feel like I'm having a panic attack. What do I do? Uh, Real answer? Go into the bathroom? Clog the, um, the drain? Fill it with cold water and, like, splash your face, right? And put your hands in it, right? Chill, but you'll be fine, right? You might be high for the next three hours, but, you know, you're not going to you're not gonna be perpetually in this state for the rest of your life. Uh, but you'll be fine, though. Young for the three. Uh, you missed my bit message? What did you say? Tabby wants you? I do have a girlfriend. I am currently taken. Uh, but I'm flattered. Uh, fun fact Friday, do you know cockroach milk is more nutritious than cow milk? How do you milk a cockroach? And who found that out? Can you milk cockroaches? Can't believe I'm Googling this. 
It serves as nutrition for their young, but humans can harvest the cockroach milk by killing female cockroaches and extracting it from their mid-gut. Dude, you know how many cockroaches you need to kill to get a fucking, to get a full fucking thing out of that? Like, it would be so fucking many. All right. You missed Scream from a while ago. Did somebody actually redeem that? Ethan for the three. Took six grams of mushrooms last night for the first time. Uh, it went from the most fun to genuinely one of my worst nights of my life. Well, yeah, that, that, that'll be mushrooms for you. Polar for the three. Golden birthday is when you turn the age that the day you're born on. Like if it's 24 on the 24th. Oh, happy birthday. Happy golden birthday. Is That's fucking great. Young for the three. All right, chat. Let's lock in for the first video today. Which high school couple will get $1,000? Lock in. Type locked in. Type locked in. Can you do philosophy at the end of stream? That's why I tagged on uh, the little drug thing. Because I feel like we'll get a little bit into that. But I was also planning on doing more of a philosophy second half or last third on Sunday. Because uh, I think that would also be well. But that's why I also added the drug thing at the end. Because we're probably going to get into an off-topic shramble about stuff. Lice for the three. I don't know for sure, though. If that video sucks, we'll fucking swap it with something else. I just slashed my leg with a razor. I need help. What do I do? I don't want to keep living life like this. I've constantly been cutting. I just paid money for you to see this. Please help. I've been baker acted before. What the fuck does that mean? I've been baker acted before recently, and I don't know what I don't know what's gonna help now. Uh, reach out to somebody in your household, whoever you're with right now, if you're actively cutting yourself and you're bleeding. Uh, if you're bleeding that bad, go to the hospital right now. Um, I'm sorry, you know you're you're dealing with depressive issues, but I, you know, cutting yourself or killing yourself is never the answer. Uh, self harm and uh, suicide is never the answer for. Uh, any problem that you're going through, right? I, I know what you're going through right now might seem like you need to do that, or, you know, self-harm is usually a means of clouding the emotions or the thoughts that you're having, but it's a temporary solution, right? A permanent solution is is therapy, getting the help that you need, uh, and, and, you know, figuring out what's wrong, you know? Life is full of ups and downs. You're going to have a lot of downs, but if you're in, in a serious depressive slump, you need to reach out to somebody and get help. I mean, I wish I could help you, but I, at the end of the day, I'm a 22-year-old Twitch streamer. I'm not a psychiatrist. Reach out to a parent, a family member, guidance counselor, friend. You know, even if they can't help you, they should be able to direct you to somebody that can. If it's really that urgent as well, call 988, uh, which is the suicide hotline number. Um, but if you're, like, actually bleeding, like, to a point where, like, it's, like, a serious fucking problem right now, uh, like, go, go to a hospital. Cyclops for the sub. Floating for the three. Listen to your buddy. Fact of the day uh, is my thing, pal. I'm already 20 days in. Get your own thing. What, the guy that was talking about cockroaches? Hold up. Let me see if Lice said anything else, and then we'll lock in here. Um, But yeah, I mean, seriously, Lice, don't do that. Uh, I, I know I'm, I'm kind of monotone sitting here talking to you about this, but like, I'm, I'm genuine when I say that's not... It makes utterly no sense. I, I, I understand the logic behind people doing self-harm, but at the end of the day, it's it's still faulted logic in the effect that you should never hurt yourself. Don't ever hurt yourself, okay? Um, unless it's accidental and you were riding a Razor scooter and it hit you in the ankle, right? Uh, you should not be fucking taking a knife or a razor or anything to your arm, leg, body, right? You shouldn't try and hurt yourself in that way. Your life is way more valuable than you think it is. Samurai for the four. And that's not even just for lice. If anybody here is going through something, seek help, right? Genuinely. Like, at the end of the day, I could give you the fucking blanketed advice. I, whether or not it's going to help, I don't know. But, I mean, there are people that can truly help you. And even if it doesn't seem like it, there, there, there are people that are. Right? And that, that not are. There are people that can and will, right? But you just have to find them. A lot of people aren't going to know, right? A lot of people are self-absorbed uh, or in their own lives, right? There might be people that want to help you, and they just don't even know that you're going through something. Right? Especially if you're hiding it. A lot of people hide the fact that, you know, they're going through something. White and toe for the sub, samurai for the four. It's my birthday today. Happy birthday, uh, Eric. One of my mom's friends has been dating, then married since sixth grade. That's crazy. Your mom's friend has been with the same guy since sixth grade. What do you think the percentage of middle school relationships end in marriage? That's got to be even less. Because college, I think, is a third. High school's like... What is... High school... 
to marriage percent. Two percent of marriages are from a high school relationship. Twenty-five percent of women saying that they married their with only twenty-five percent of women saying they married their first love. But in the nineteen forties, twenty-five percent of high school relationships ended marriage. But now it's only two percent. Middle school's got to be bro like point five. Like it's got to be like nothing. And I think college is still third though. College to marriage percent. I think it's higher. I can't find an accurate statistic on this. It just says 40% of college relationships are six months or longer. It's just longer relationships. It doesn't necessarily say marriage. I don't know. Gabe for the Thousand Vanistas. How's your day going? Brad Della for the Thray. Did you hear about the new Metro Boom album? No, I have not. Uh, bike for the sub. Spike for the sub. All right, next one. Uh, Tyler Oliveira video here. I snuck into Bohemian Grove. 19-minute video here. That's me sneaking inside Bohemian. My grandma had kids at 16. Dude, that's wild to be a parent. I feel like a lot of people's grandparents had kids at like 16, 17, 18. Imagine having to take care of a living being while you're in fucking high school. Well, I mean, a lot of people in the fucking 20s probably weren't in high school or some shit in the 1940s and shit. MS for the sub, Gabe for the, for the thousand biddies. No, but like a, a majority of y'all's grandparents probably got married at like 18. MS Place for the fucking 10 gifteds. Thank you for the 10 gifted fucking subs. Thank them if you got a sub. Thank you for the fucking 10 gifteds, MS Place, TTV4. Thank you for the fucking subs. Lock in here. I snuck into Bohemian Grove. That's me sneaking inside Bohemian Grove. Dude, I'm cooked. I gotta run. <laughs> An invite only secret society of American elites who gather in the woods two weeks out of. Is the Bohemian Grove the Illuminati? Or not the Bohemian Grove? I don't the Illuminati go to Bohemian Grove or am I thinking of like is it a different group or some shit no every year to decide the future of the world and conduct human sacrifice rituals in front of a 40-foot owl god named Mola or so the rumors say many have begun wondering what actually goes down here after famous boxer Ryan Garcia said this the babies babies guys babies they're eating babies literally and I'm the crazy one. So they're in with these bankers and former presidents yes. and, and some- Oh my God, don't ask me who's Ryan Garcia. I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. For if, if this becomes a YouTube video for my YouTube audience, it is like an ongoing thing that my chat just asks me who's Ryan Garcia like every fucking day. It's fucking pointless. I don't know why they like- uh, <gasps> I can't even show the alert box. Bro, Strawberry Tabby just raided me. Bro! W raid! Thank you for the fucking raid! Voice cracked right there. See, this is where I need to whip out the jiggle machine right here for fucking raids. I feel like that's when I really gotta, you know, crank out the jiggle machine here. Might be, might be more, you know, more of effective in on maintaining an audience. Yeah, little shouts to Strawberry Tappy. Thank you for the fucking raid. I appreciate that. 3,179 people. That is fucking wild. Thank you for the raid. Oh my god. Welcome. Uh, for any Strawberry Tappy viewers that stay. I'm a Joe Bart. Uh, I'm, I'm a Joe Bart. I'm Joe Bartolozzi. I do reacts, rants, variety content, PDW for the three. I don't have a jiggle machine, but I'm working on getting one. You know? I don't know if that would make some of you guys stay, but, you know, I'll pop out. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get a jiggle machine if it works, you know? Would you mind telling me who Ryan Garcia is? Oh my fucking god! Lock in. Guy brings over something that it's an effigy that's supposed to be a body. Yeah. And then they drop it on the fire. And oh, did Strawberry say anything? Hold up. Oh, they put the uh, tabby raid emojis or emotes. They're all worshiping an owl god. But before I sneak into the grove, what do the locals nearby know? Right in front of me, we got the Hoot Owl. Yo, you get invited by a sketchy rich man sitting in the corner of a pub to Bohemian Grove. Are you going? Mm. 
I would want to see what's going on. I'd kind of feel like he might kill me. You know? I think that's my that's my thought process here is if I got invited to go to be Bohemian Grove, I'd probably be like, yeah, I'd want to pull up, you know, see what's popping. But what if, like, I'm the sacrifice? Accelerated for the sub. You guys know what the owl is? They stick, like, an acid tab to me, so I start tripping. Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's... No, 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 no. Oh, no? No, no, no. Oh, we're just walking around and talking. I thought you saw it. We can walk away, though. We're just trying to learn what's going on with the owl. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. You don't know. The locals were immediately on guard. You know anything about the Bohemian Grove? I worked there before, yeah. You worked there? Whoa, what did you see? Uh, a lot of things that I cannot talk about. Actually? Yep. Would you give us, um, theoretically, what might you have seen if someone were to work there? I cannot talk about that. Did you sign a document? Mm, nope. And I cannot talk about it. Partake in anything? Have a wonderful day, sir. Okay. Wow. Just be careful, okay? Be careful? Do you think we're dealing- What the fuck do they see in Bohemian Grove? The things that are much more powerful than- well, I can say. They relocated because the area got exposed. They don't go there anymore. Where the fuck do they go now? What did- Probably he... in like the Canadian wilderness or some shit. You see. You know anything about the Bohemian Grove? Yeah, I used to work there like 10, 15 years ago. Oh, I don't want to be on camera. Oh, you know they play That's the <laughs> Yeah, if you turn off the camera, I'll just tell you everything. What was that? <laughs> Never mind. Everyone... What the fuck did he say about Hiroshima? <laughs> 10, 15 years ago. Oh, I don't want to be on camera. Oh. You know, they play that's the bomb same where everybody wants to be there? No, they fucking didn't. Okay, see, now, like, that's where we're getting into... That's where we're getting into conspiracy theories. I watched Oppenheimer, all right? I don't want to say I'm an expert on this, but I fucking saw the film Oppenheimer, right, in theater. It's a great film. And um, they weren't in Bohemian Grove there, so... What was that? <laughs> Never mind. Everyone here knew something about the Grove until they saw my little camera. It's probably not a good place to be going unless you know what you're doing. What do you mean? Um, there's a lot of rich, uh, crazy people up there. You're trying to get in? My father was in. Oh my god, somebody reading Flax. Cool, chat. Fuck. Riser for the three. Uh, I'll put a note in our file so you aren't sacrificed. Uh, Drew for the thousand videos. First time on stream, my girlfriend just dumped me yesterday after a year. I'm so lost. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Nobody talked to her, so I guess I'm just dumping it here. You've helped me so much. Uh, I'm 19, and I just have no idea what to do now that she's gone. Focus on yourself, man. I, that's literally all you can do. It, it's going to take a, a while, right, for you to heal through this, but uh, I'm sorry you're going through that, dude. Uh, but you gotta focus on yourself, man. Brunsky for the three. I'm 420 high right now, bong high domed right now. Oh, he was in the club? Yeah. Who was he? He was Mason. Oh, he was Mason. 39th. Did you inherit his will? Mm -hmm. You'll get in trouble, Joe. Don't mock them. I'm not mocking the people of Bohemian Grove. I just want to know what the fuck's going on. Mason will? I can't, I can't disclose that. Okay. Is there anything we should know? Mm, probably not... Pro pro you, you don't want to mess with it? Okay. No, I'm done here. Alright, alright. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate you. That's it. What would happen? I don't know. You know anything about the Bohemian Grove? I know lots about the Bohemian Grove. What is with people just sitting on- sitting outside on, like, fucking staircases? Do you guys have people in your fucking towns that are just, like, sit- Like, why is this guy just here? In, like, the middle of a fucking Wednesday at, like, 3 p.m. Just fucking chilling outside. It's nice outside, but he's not going on a walk. He's just fucking sitting outside of a fucking random ass building. Would you like to share? No. <laughs> He's an NPC. Is there some darkness to it? Don't film me. Hit the road. He's waiting for me to interact. I have like six. I have six fucking response choices. He goes, "Oh, hello there, estranged traveler." Option one: Do you know about Bohemian Grove? Option two: Where's the nearest gas station? Option three. Punch in face. Okay. Yeah, you can't really get up there, though. Can't get in? You seen any crazy things or no? Sometimes. Yeah. I think a lot of naughty naughty goes up there. You know? Option it's four, have you seen a girl? Not from that one FMV game. Ah, <laughs> uh, W Chatters that mentioned that. That was fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. From that one F I played an FMV game where every every fucking option throughout the entirety of the game had one option that was have you seen a girl? 
no matter what the conversation was about. You could just interject and just ask them if they've seen somebody. Just let things go free and let loose. But luckily, I found a nearby crystal store with a lady who claimed to have folded George Bush's underwear when they came to town. Is there anything about the Bohemian Grove? What an odd thing to claim. Too much. Too much? What do you know? I have actually folded laundry for the Bohemian Grove before when I needed to. So all of their laundry is processed through the laundry mat oh, that is around the corner. So I have folded George Bush's sheets for heaven's sakes. Uh, you will start to see a lot of helicopters flying in directly to the property. Um, Bill Clinton's been there, George Bush has been there. It has been rumored that the next president has always decided there before it occurs, but that is a rumor. I have literally had Grovers, some dude forgot his credit card and handed me his Grove card as collateral. And I'm Whoa. like, Gro Grove ID. And before the Grove happens, you watch a bunch of limos with high end hookers come in. They're not allowed to bring women back to the facility, but the boys will stay off campus there. The other things that happen is they hit up all of the locals on where they can get drugs every effing year. Oh. There was a gentleman that I was blessed to serve at Main Street's bar for about six years. He Yo, actually... you laced the Bohemian Grove drug drug supply? The paintings TOS? I'm pretty sure paintings are fine. Am I wrong? Yeah, I'm pretty sure if it's like art, it's not TOS. Yeah. It's not like a video of a naked woman. It's an art rendering of a woman in a fucking, like, lake. Yeah, paintings aren't TOS. Anyways, imagine you lace all the drugs that the Bohemian Grove people are taking. They're like, yeah, we just want some weed. You put, like, fucking... Uh, not not psilocybin. What am I going to say? 5-MeO-DMT. Uh, you put, like, toad venom all over it so they smoke it. MS for the 2,700 fucking biddies. Our love for the sub fentanyl. Well, that would kill him. MS for the three. I watch your videos and like those, so I decided to watch your streams. Dub, Xander for the sub. They lived on the Grove year-round. You have to be exceptionally rich. You have to be, like, vetted in through family. And I believe he spent his dying years there. He was actually one of the really nice dudes. He would come in to Main Street three times a week for dinner and drinks. Um, it matters not what you have in life. It is how you treat others. So he was one of those that treated the janitor and the CEO with the same dignity and respect. But not all Grovers are the same. And they also ate babies. Uh, they cut up in their stomachs and ate their organs. Like they were Cheetos. It was, uh, it was kind of a weird sight to see. The owl is in his leafy temple. That's all within the grove. Why is every video of any conspiracy theory in 140p and it's fucking pitch black outside and they're holding the camera at an off angle and they have like fucking shaky ass hands so I can't fucking understand anything that's going on? It's just like, it's like, this is the guy, the guy, the guy whips out his fucking, he has an iPhone and an Nokia and he goes, oh, I, I, you know, just in case I want to keep it on something that's, that's rock solid. Fucking like, what well, dude, just fucking just record it. It's an old video, dude, even uh, this. Okay. How old could this possibly be? It's from like 2004. While well, only elite, wealthy, and famous men are invited, combined with the extreme secrecy- That looks more like the fucking KKK than Bohemian Grove. Like, that guy's wearing a white robe, dude. While well, only elite, wealthy, and famous men are invited, combined with the extreme secrecy and security, this is the only real footage captured inside the event by Alex Jones in the year 2000. Alex Jones?! The guy that thought Sandy Hook was fake? He went to fucking Bohemian Grove? What? I am learning more about Alex Jones lore. Alex Jones went to fucking... Went to fucking Bohemian Grove? This is a known story? I didn't know that. Some believe a real human was being burned alive during the ceremony, and others believe these guys were just hammered, goofing around, letting loose, and talking business. And that there's Yeah, I'm, I'm having a feeling that it's the latter, dude. I really don't think... I, somebody would say something. If they were, like, burning people. Nothing demonic or satanic going on here. You think Who's Alex Jones? The guy that goes like, Oh, there's, uh, there's monkey blood in the vaccines. Uh, you gotta, you gotta take, take control of your mind.
This guy. I think they're all fornicating with one another? Would not surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> That's where all the big wigs hang out. Okay. That's where they party. What big wigs are we talking? Everybody. White House people. <laughs> You've been invited? Uh, no. Would you go if you were? I have to go. Oh, yeah, I would. See, last time uh, was, uh, what's his name, running for president? Al Gore. Okay. He, uh, he came through with his, Man -bear his crowd, you know, black SUVs and all that stuff. And uh, invited him in for a cocktail, but he refused that one. <laughs> but they were on their way to the Grove at the time. Do you think you all fornicate with one another? Oh, I know they do. You have proof? No. <laughs> they have some rituals and stuff, and you have to, like, pay a large fee to be part this of it. This guy has a fucking Darth Vader voice. Holy shit, dude. It sounds like he inhaled that one balloon that's like the opposite of helium to make his voice deeper. All the weird stuff I think happens out at that Bohemian. I really don't know except for just hearing stories. But who knows? Who knows what goes on out there, man? I don't. I'd rather not know. <laughs> Do you think they're engaging in any wizardry or dream? I would want to know! You live a mile away from people that are doing like rituals and shit in the woods? I'd be like, uh, what's that about? You know? Craft. I, I do. I, I believe that there's some ma something magical, out, or, you know, spiritual or something out there. But uh, the Bohemian man is just. Uh, Maybe they have a leprechaun. Fuck, dude. What would be the trippiest like conspiracy theory slash mytho mythological animal that you could like stumble upon? If I found a fucking leprechaun, I think. Oh my god, I don't even know what I would do. What would you do, chat? If you're you're walking through the woods. And you hear like uh like coins like shaking, right? Like somebody's walking, and then you just see a fucking leprechaun. I would immediately think I was on acid. Like I would be like somebody drugged me. I have some disorder. You would kidnap him. You would kill it. I wouldn't kill it. I would try and talk to him. Oh my god, that would be like a curse, dude. Imagine seeing a leprechaun and like you have a whole conversation with him. And then you're like, hey, can I get a picture? And he goes, oh, and like snaps and disappears. Now you're that crazy guy that's seen a leprechaun. Now you're that crazy guy that's seen a leprechaun, right? That fucking sucks. Like that, like that would be awful. Like fucking, um, it would be like a good experience to have and no one's going to fucking believe you. Like you see a leprechaun, you have a whole fucking in-depth conversation. He's like, yeah, leprechauns are real. Yeah, no, we have, no, there's like a, there's a bunch of us. Yeah, no, we collect gold. And then he's like, hey, can I have a picture real quick? And he goes, woof, and fucking, like, disappears into, like, the leprechaun universe. And now you're like, what the fuck are you going to tell your friends? I saw a fucking leprechaun. What do you mean you saw? I saw a fucking leprechaun. What do you mean you saw a fucking leprechaun? I, I talked to a leprechaun. His name was Chuck. It's a, a bunch of mystery. That's what I think. I know some powerful men in the, you know, in this world world leaders they go there i know that much you seen anything interesting about the bohemian grove since you've been here wow there uh, you know there's been a what lot about of a tooth fairy i would kill that fuck if i okay that's different if i saw a leprechaun i'd want to talk to him if i woke up and there was like some weird fairy trying to like grab my teeth i'd go wham flap it the political protest and that's what like are they using the teeth for what are they using the teeth for Building homes and shit? What are they living in my what are they living in like a castle of teeth? Do they eat my teeth? What are they doing? Smushing it? It's money. It's like their version of money, but how do they have regular money? Why are tooth fairies why are tooth fairies exchanging cash for teeth? Just go to a dentist, you know? Like do you think they have a do you think they have like a deal with like like dentists that like pull teeth and shit? How much are how much are fucking wisdom teeth worth? I feel like that's gotta be those are probably like the fucking holy grail. Right? That's like finding a diamond. But, a thing. but I, I don't really uh, know much about that. Maybe they like, maybe they like grind it up and snort it. Like it's fucking crack. Like it's coke. You ever think that? Maybe, maybe the tooth fairy's like getting a cheese grater and fucking grinding your baby teeth up and then going, fucking snorting a line of it. Like it's fucking ketamine or something like that. Are you sure? 
<laughs> it turns out, not everyone feels too comfortable with the idea of a group of elites meeting in the secrecy of the woods to decide the fate of the rest of the country. The workers at Bohemian Grove are suing the elite club for wage theft. In fact, one worker described members as obscenely wealthy with private jets, multi-million dollar cars, $200,000 watches, homes on the beach in Malibu. They said that they would have to perform tasks that were beyond their job duties, including such as one instance where a billionaire member forgot to bring underwear to the camp and the valets were asked to hand wash it. I remember when I was a child, my mom used to protest. Really? Yeah. What was she protesting? Them coming here? Uh, white men of privilege living exclusively. If I forgot my underwear, I would just fucking, I would pull one of those inverted type shits. I would fucking, like, if I had one pair of underwear and I was there for, like, two days, you would free ball. I'm not free balling. I would fucking invert. I would do the, I would do the old invert. Unless I went on a run or something like that. Rotate it every week. Nah, I had a friend that one time, he told me he didn't wash his laundry for, like, three weeks. And he said he wore the same pair of underwear three times. Like, three full days in a row. I went. He said first day he wore it regularly, then he inside it out, and then he wore it backwards. I was like, how uncomfortable was that? Like, male underwear backwards? He was like, it wasn't that bad. I said, dude, you could have just washed your fucking underwear. The lifestyles. Okay. Not sharing the wealth. As I walked into a bookstore where the owner assured me he handpicked every book, something about this town felt off. Like, you can't go to Bohemian. Sure. It's at the Bohemian Club. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. Like there's security and fences. And, and yeah. they don't stay here. No, they stay there. It's super interesting. I mean, and you can find a lot of stuff online. There's not a lot of published stuff about it because they're really secret. But we've tried to go onto the grounds and they've told us to leave. Ooh. You think Your chat one or two. I got to post on TikTok. One. All right, lock back in. Try it again, we get in? I try, try. Yeah? Yeah, try. Hey there. She wants Tyler to die. You about the Bohemian Grove? You can't go there. Can't go there? Okay, you ever see them come through here? This is that, this is that bar you'd walk into. And the first thing you hear is this guy go, Well, I ain't racist. But. Well, I, I think that everybody's the same. But. I don't know anything about the Bohemian Grove. You can't go there. Can't go there? Okay, you ever see them come through here? No, not really. No? No, these guys are pretty secretive. All right. You try to get in there and get caught, bye-bye. I'm dead? <laughs> it's very possible. They got security left and right there. All right, well, pray for me. See ya. You think they'll let me in? Nope. You won't even get to the front gate, my friend. Not even a parking lot. They're that strict. So I headed down towards the nearby river to scout out a potential entryway via water. Bohemian Grove is all the way over those trees. The current looks fast. We're looking to find an owl out here. Um, Tyler, current looks fast. You're telling me you can't cross that fucking river, bro? That shit's fucking like uh, 20 yards. Just fucking swim across. Owl out here. Um, I do know if you go down that road and take a left, if you keep going, there's like a barricade. It's like a weird fence. It almost looks like a bunch of metal wrapped around it and everything. It's really weird. Creepy. Yeah, it's, it's like a really weird fence. There's like metal and shit, and it's like a fucking fence, and there's like stakes on top, so like people can't hop the fence, and it's like there's like metal and shit. Kind of creepy. Almost like a Resident Evil kind of vibe. Ooh. You know anything I should know about it? No, nah, not really, other than it. He looks like he would call me a weary traveler and offer me, uh, some like some weird crystal out of his pocket in exchange for uh for some fucking gold coins tiny sec like security is always on patrol with them yeah no i could i could buy like a potion from him oh we get people coming in for bohemian and everything and you can just tell about the cars and all that stuff so lamborghinis or like suvs a little bit of both. For to see a Grove member, would you be able to recognize one? Sometimes, like in the summer when they're there, because they have like certain, like, uh, they, they, what is it, that all white uh, thing sometimes. They 
Or like all white garb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but not, not always. Uh, that ain't Bohemian Grove. That's uh, that's another group of people. That's a little bit spooky. I, I know there's a bunch of hookers that f***ing stay over here while they're here. Are they hot? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, but they charge way too much. Oh, you've asked their price? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I, no, um, one time I, uh. One time, it was a, you know, I was like, hey, uh, you know, I picked out the one that looked like the cheapest, and I said, hey, you know, what's uh, what's what's crackle? She told me a thousand dollars. She told me I, I, she told me she wouldn't ever do me. I was like, oh, what the fuck? I, I, I be honest with me. I'm just, uh, I'm taking the damn worth the bullshit to begin with. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. Half of them know what they're doing. They're around with really. Okay. But I mean, you know. Mine looks like an ancient Sumerian god, and I'm sure you've seen this shit. You saw an owl driving in here, too, on that little lodge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, with, I mean, it's somehow related to it, but there's a lot of owls around here, too. <laughs> what is Moloch? What's, like, the simplified version of... Oh, uh, look at the purpose. I know Moloch was uh, some sort of uh, Semitic god. I know they sacrificed uh, children to him and stuff. The only one that we know about, the, the big ritual there, is they have that big owl statue, and they burn a child in effigy for the... What is it? The cremation of care? Yeah, yeah. Do you think they're burning kids out there? I think they have. Possibly in the past. Well, I've been back there before when I worked. Really? Yeah, I worked for a septic tank company. It's like the rich guy's kind of private hideaway. So it's like the old rich men, they want to act like they're Boy Scouts again. But, uh, I mean, the guards are dicks. So. Are dicks? Yeah. They won't let like, us in? You try to, like, record them, they'll, be like, they'll try to grab the camera. They'll be like, oh, fucking guys. Like, Actually? Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they get pissed. They play around. Really? Here, Do you think? Go back. There's a little kid, and they can come after us. Like when I was like 10 years old, you could like just crawl under a barbed wire fence. Cause you know, like up front, it's not that. Sure. It's not like a prison or anything. It's not crazy. But uh, no, they... that's not that's not what the weary traveler told me. That's not what the potion man said. The potion man said there was a bunch of metal and shit, and it was scary, and there's fences, and it looked like Resident Evil, and there'd be like a zombie that would come out and fucking cut my throat up, and fucking eat me. And maybe peel out my insides and maybe kidnap me and put me in a home and make me eat, like, a weird, like, chum. And also, like, hunt me, but also at the same time want me to be a part of their family. And then, like, I would also become one of the people that would, like, kill and eat other people. Piss. I'm just describing Resident Evil 7. Jack for the two subs, Dark for the thousand buddies. What does one and two mean? I'm, it's just one or two, which TikTok. Will you be playing Helldivers again? Maybe one day. Hat and Wild for the sub, Charlie for the three. Do you think Brooke would believe you if you said you saw a leprechaun? Yeah. CPR for the sub. If I was genuinely serious, I think originally, initially, no, but if I really stuck with it, yeah. Mr. Gaby for the thousand bees. First time sharing bi uh, bits, you're my favorite streamer, goes for the sub. If I was just like, oh, hey, I saw a leprechaun, she'd be like, you're fucking with me. But if I was like dead ass and I was like genuinely emotionally distraught about it, Alex Jones has never entered my the establishment of fake footage. Rise over the sub uh, for the three, but he's rare and mad for the sub. Uh, I think I'm caught up. Jack for the thousand buddies. I think I read that. Olaf for the sub. Uh, all right. For sure. There's a lot of rumors. I don't know what's true and what's not. I've never been there. Just take a left and keep going. Then, when they stop you, then they you in the yeah. After learning as much as I could from the locals and waiting until the cover of the night, it was now time to see if I could infiltrate the grove using an inflatable kayak I bought off Amazon, avoid security, and make my way to the 40-foot tall owl statue undetected. I would low-key be fucking terrified. If I was going to infiltrate what I thought was, like, full of a rich and elite people. I mean, they're not there actively, but that would... Dude, like, they could they could just fucking kill you. If it's, like... If it's... The stories are true and serious, they could just kill you and then fucking get rid of it. It is true. <laughs> and then you'd see on the news that Tyler Oliveira, like, fucking died or killed himself or something like that. 12-12. see if she loads. Yeah, she jump in, right? We think it filled it all the way up. It's like sinking immediately. Okay, I'll give it a shot. It's taking on a lot of water. All right, I'm about we I'm about waist depth in the water right now. It's filling up like a bathtub. All right, I'm just standing in the river at this point. Why did we even buy this fucking thing? The only problem was the let's just walk let's just walk across the river. I thought it was I thought it was deeper than it actually is. The moment I got in this kayak, it's like three feet deep. It's like we could have just fucking walked across. This is pointless. Oh, this gonna float, dude. It filled up halfway with river water, soaking me entirely, and the current was so fast I was getting pulled downstream and had no chance. How was this animation? <laughs> 
They have to they have to tell they have to actually show how it's going. Up shore where I needed to go. I think I'm getting swept out. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. The current's too strong, dude. Left side and just walk it up. No, dude, I'm cooked. Did you make it across? No, dude. I'm getting sucked in. I'm fighting for surviving right now, dude. I don't know where this leads. Got a branch. Where are the clear? I'm alive. Can you just get out? Dude. Somebody redeemed Scream. I'm not turning up my game for this. Max Sailor's daughter for the sub. Mia for the thousand biddies. Chat. Uh, Mia says, hi, Joe. Thank you for the fucking thousand biddies. Chat, turn down your fucking mic. So I'm going to stream in five, four, three, two, one. <gasps> the current is fucking ridiculous. I'm happy I'm soaked in water right now. I'm definitely going to get hypothermia. I mean, the closest, the, like... Exit, exit point. It's got to just be up and through the woods, essentially. Jump up. Branches are breaking. Something that looks climbable. I'm going to try to get out. Dude, he actually is fucking covered in water right now. It is just, he's just sitting in a fucking swimming pool right now. Oh, that's awful. Dude, don't tell me he just wore, like, sweatpants. Oh, he's sopping wet. I made it ashore. I'm just trying to climb up the hill and get out of here. Kayak is gone. I'm fighting for survival. After yanking myself out of the river and crawling my way through someone's backyard, I barely made it back to land. My kayak was swallowed by the river, and I had to think of another way to get in the grove before sunrise. We need to re-strategize the game plan right now because I don't see any feasible way. All right, I bought these night vision goggles off Timu. Let's give them a try. They like don't work. They like don't work at all. He's like, "Are right, we gonna start working our way through the wilderness here?" I'm going against the current all the way across there. I don't think it's possible. I thought I was gonna end up in Russia at the end of this river. I'm scared. Let's go. We need to strategy. I failed to get in through the Russian River via kayak. So now he fucking went back, dude. You already got sopping wet. I would have just fucking committed and swam across the river. I said, fuck that shit, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna bull rush straight through the mountains, jump over any fences if I see them, and hopefully not get caught. It's 2 a.m., we're running out of time before the sun rises. It's time to get this done. Cheers. With five hours until sunrise, the plan was not- Mr. Fearless for the sub for uh, four months. Hike up the woods right to the left of the main entrance, stealth hike around the security through the mountains until I made it to the owl. Uh, fuck. <laughs> this is a curse. <laughs> This is a cursed backup plan. No, no, we've no. we've paved a random mountain road. I'm thinking this is probably the plan we should have done from the start. You might be right. The kayak was a death sentence out there. I'm surprised I didn't die or drown. The water was cold. I was full of water. Blake is legit gonna drop me off. I'm gonna rush into the mountains mm -hmm. with no light, just straight up. Ah. For legal reasons, this is all generated by AI. I'm a little. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna break through the fences i'm gonna probably fucking i'm gonna start fucking vandalizing everything that's that's probably around me i might i might set the owl on fire for legal reasons this is all ai none of this is real okay let's go all right there's a person here i'm gonna club them to death a little bit shell shocked from that last experience, and I am afraid of how this plays. Oh my god, it's like this. These graphics are so realistic. Fuck. No, I. The screams sound so real. I do not want to go to jail. <sighs> that would suck. Here in the woods and go up the mountain. You might be in someone's backyard. A light might turn on, like a you know motion detecting light. Sure. Just power through it. Go up the hill until you're in the darkness. Right there. Right there. Go up. Go straight. Up the mountain from here. As I'm crouch hiking in pure darkness for two hours straight, I make it to this point on- Two hours straight? How is he gonna get back? The map, and on my life, I hear what sounds like human feet crunching leaves in front of me, and... <sighs> so, just to double check, I wait in silence for ten minutes. I hear nothing. I move ten steps to my right. I stop. I listen. What state is this in, by the way? I hear the same sound of footsteps crushing through the brush and what sounds like a person going. <sighs> At this point, I'm afraid Howie. for my life. So I run down the hill and.
Dude, couldn't there be like a mountain lion here? I decided to bum rush the main gate and see if I can sprint my way to the owl without getting caught by security. Like, I don't think I would ever want to walk in the middle of the woods for two hours at night in Cali. Or Oregon, wherever this is. Somebody just yell at him? No way he walked that far and then immediately got somebody to fucking point a gun at him. Oh. <laughs> Your bitch ass guard chihuahua I will punt the living piss out of that fucking thing That's gonna stop me from going into Bohemian Grove That fucking thing <laughs> Fucking 25 year old chihuahua That has one eye and the fucking tongue That's hanging out of its mouth Oh where did that thing even fucking come from? I gotta run. Chihuahua ran at me. Scared out of my mind, I ran as far as I could to Blake in the getaway car, and we sped back to our hotel to think of a final strategy to get into Bohemian Grove before sunrise. Let's go. I met with the chihuahua and I guess I put your hands up. Alright, I'm just gonna jump the front gate. Actually. <laughs> two hours until sunrise, I drove back to the hotel, drank a Red Bull, and decided I would have to try one last time. This is so fake. I don't think this is fake. I think that guy, I don't know if that guy actually pointed the gun at him, but the chihuahua was definitely there. Yeah, okay, I'm going in. Alright, brother, pray for me. Bro wouldn't be here if he found Bohemian Grove. Five a.m. When I jumped the gate this time, the guards must have been asleep or taking a dump because no one's. Bro, they didn't re fucking plan anything. He just went back to the same fucking gate. All right, we're gonna go re-strategize what we're gonna do here. Okay, this time I'm just gonna run faster. Me and I ran into the cover of the darkness towards the owl, making sure to turn my flashlight off to remain undetected. Just gotta hop the gate. Gotta get out. He's close. He's so close. Dude, where even? How does he know where he's going? All right, we made it in. Oh my god, he actually did make it. I mean, that's a lot of benches. This is it. Is this illegal? Well, would be trespassing. Truck just drove by. As I planked on the ground, waiting for it to drive past me, he whips the car to the left, shining the light straight onto me, and I run. Gotta go. I'd hit him with the, uh... What do you mean I'm not allowed to be here? You hit him with the, uh, what? Oh, this is, uh, this is trespassing? You would act crazy. You'd get shot. Realistically, Tyler probably did the best thing in this, in this situation. Get out of there. Does he even know where he's going? Like, bro's just wandering. Yo, Kermit! Thank you for the fucking five gifteds, bro. Thank them if you got to stop. Thank you for the five gifteds, Kermit. Me up for the three. Ian for the three. There's a man who snuck in there. He recorded everything. He's a YouTuber named Dancer, Chroma, and Mr. Fearless for the sub. Hey. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you for sparing me. Goodbye. 
Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for sparing me. I'm sorry. Drive. Drive. Holy shit. Didn't quite make it to the owl. I think I was on my ass. I made it to the cathedral thing. I saw him pull in. He went off road. I was like, fuck, he's not messing around. So I sped out of there. And I made it out of line. Please don't sue me. We're Why are people saying fake video? Like, I honestly don't think that's I'm a fake video. I'm just curious. I apologize. But you had to let us satisfy that curiosity. While I risk my life to get a mere glimpse into the secret- I mean, what is that weird wooden structure? The world of the powerful elite. <laughs> and decide on how us peasants shall live. Just know that whatever happens, I would never kill my- Also- Alright, that was a W video. Hold up, chat. I gotta piss and then we'll fucking lock in for the next one. I uh, count me down 30 seconds. We're back. The song, end of the beginning. Y'all say L song because it's overplayed on TikTok. Hmm. Finn and Anch for the sub. Hold up, I'm going to go off cam here for a second, chat. <clears throat> beep boop, beep boop. All right, next video. Um, Finn for the sub. Uh, meh, meh. Uh, biscuit for the sub. Some of the reasons people call nine one one for. Um, then we have why kids don't go outside anymore. D'Amelio experiment coolest uh, episode of Deal or No Deal, or every joke is played in ten minutes. Super reasons people call 9114. Lock in here, chat. Um, Super reasons people call 9114. You call 911? But did you say you killed two people or something like that? Okay, how old are you? Hey, um. I had my headset on. I got a, I got a double kill, and I kind of lost my shit. And I told them that I'd uh, kill their family. So you know that was on, that was on me there. I um. Uh, I wasn't serious. It was just a bit of friendly game. Search and destroy banner on Call of Duty. It wasn't... I wasn't actually serious when I said that. A man in a blue hoodie just pulled a gun on me. Okay, and is he still there? Uh, yeah, he's... He man calling police on himself. He's running away. Over 600,000 911 calls are made daily. A large number of these calls aren't actual emergencies. Here are four cases of people who dialed 911 for bizarre reasons. Starting with the craziest of them all. Yeah, but the kid with the Rainbow Six Siege, he butt dialed. 
Imagine butt dialing the cops while you're playing a shooting video game. It was an unbelievable scene in Fort Wayne, Indiana, when 18-year-old Wyatt Beckler made a very disturbing call to 911, which he happened to record. Uh, 410 Poplar. Hey, um, a man in a blue hoodie just pulled a gun on me. Okay, and is he still there? I mean, uh, is he doing this before he commits a crime? Like, why is he calling the cops on himself? Yeah, he's, he's, he's running away. Is he white, black, Hispanic? The weirdest thing happened. Beckler reported an armed person threatening people, then described himself in detail, which essentially amounted to swatting. However, swatting typically involves the caller targeting someone else, not themselves, which made this very odd. Police officer Andrew Fry was sent to the location. Upon sighting Beckler, he drew his weapon because reports indicated the suspect might be armed. I got a male in a blue hoodie right here at uh, Poplar and Hoagland. Why did he do this to himself? Did he want the cops to kill him or some shit? That's what I'm thinking. I mean, either A, trying to get money out of it. Like, say the cop injures him. B, he wanted the cops to kill him. Let me see your hands real quick. Come back here. Hey, come back here. Get your hands up. Get your hands up. Let me see your hands. He's walking northbound. Hoagland is refusing commands. What the fuck? This officer was under immense pressure, as police officers are generally advised to use non-lethal force on suspects. However, the fact the suspect might be wielding a gun made the whole situation very tricky. Let me see. That's where they whip out that beanbag gun and go, boom, 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 hit you in the nuts, fucking shatters both your ball sacks. Uh. hands now. Get your hands up where I can see them! Keep your hands up and walk back to me now! What I got one at gunpoint. Keep coming to me! Keep your hands up! Face away from me and keep your hands up! Face away from me and keep your hands up! Keep walking back! Keep walking back! Stop there, get on your knees now, keep your hands on your head. Get on your knees, stop! It appeared Beckler was attempting to provoke the officer into using force. However, this took a shock. Uh, maybe was he trying to get money out of it? Trying to, you know, get a cop to shoot you when he shouldn't have? In turn, when the suspect- Kind of a risky play there, though, trying to poke an officer. That guy, you could just shoot him in the fucking face. Suspect suddenly did this. Get on oh, your- Oh, is he gonna run at him? Hold up, do I- Is this gonna be TOS? Knees. Get on your knees. Now. Get on your knees, dude. Beckler attempted to pull something out of his pocket, prompting the officer to shoot him three times. Shots fired, one down. Beckler was discovered to have had a knife. He was rushed to the hospital, but the gunshot wound proved to be fatal. Investigation. What the fuck? We can't even ask the motherfucker why he did it. So he called the cops on himself so he could stab a police officer? What the fuck does that even mean? Why? ...revealed Beckler's mental health issues. Oh my god, he was trying to kill himself. Oh. ...his online activities of watching and researching murder by cop videos. The prosecution office deemed the officer's use of force justifiable and did not press charges against him. Beckler's case was quite sad, but the person... you think he wanted to kill himself? Like, what is that? I don't understand. Murder by cop? That's what he was... I, yeah, maybe he did. He just wasn't, he was trying to get them to kill him. Charlie for the three. This guy's voice got to be AI. Little God for the five. Floating for the three. Uh, I already read that. Person in the next case could be considered the strangest to ever call 911. On January 3rd, 2023, police officers responded to a civil complaint about a man whose auto work wasn't completed despite making full payment. As the officer approached the complainant, he could immediately sense something was off. I had an appointment. I had a breathalyzer thing in my car. Nah, that's whack though. Like, I, I, I'm always, I, obviously I'm against, like, suicide and shit like that, but... I know there's people that, like, will jump in front of moving cars and shit to kill themselves because they don't want to kill themselves. They want to die, but they want somebody else to kill them. But then now, like, you just have that person fucking feeling awful for the rest of their fucking life, right? Like, now they're going to sit there and be like, I ran over this guy when, like, you fucking threw yourself in front of their car. And, like, that's also wild. 
right? Like, that's fucking, yeah, it's like, well, passive suicide, yeah, but I'm saying it's still, like, that's just fucked. Like, if you're, if you're a semi-truck driver and, like, some guy just jumps in front of your car, now you're gonna feel like you killed them when it's not your fault. It needs to get swapped out every month and they do an evaluation on it. I, I paid for it over the phone. They'd be fine in five years. I don't know if you kill somebody if you're gonna get over that in five years. I, <laughs> I think many things you'll get over in five years. I don't know if murdering somebody is one of them. My credit card already did all that, and now he won't do the work on my car when he's already got my money and everything else. You tell you won't do the work or what? Yeah, he told me he won't do the work. The customer said he was there to get his breath alcohol ignition interlock device checked out, which was a red flag in itself. These devices are typically court-ordered for DUI offenders to operate a vehicle. While police aren't supposed to profile individuals based on appearance or situation, this individual had too many things off about him. Why are you sweating so much? Because it's hot. It's, I've been sitting in the car for an hour and a half. I got no AC. So, uh, just to keep your hands out of your pockets while we're talking. So he called them because the guy won't work on his vehicle? I understand that. I treat everybody the same way. I just thought no disrespect. He was sweating a lot, which he attributed to the heat, and seemed tense when asked to take his hands out of his pockets. Subsequently, the officer questioned the mechanic, whose testimony was an eye-opener. What's going on? I'm trying to get him out of here, you know, and uh, when I was doing the download, his, his camera didn't work, okay? And then all of a sudden, he blew up on me. Oh, the camera's fine, no, 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 right? I'm like, I'm on the phone with support, tech support kind of re rem uh, remedy the problem. So he got all on my face about it, and then uh, I just said, look, I don't need this. And I just packed up my shit and got off the truck, and I, and I pulled it in and I said, you gotta go somewhere else. Most DUI interlock devices are equipped with a camera. These devices detect the driver's breath alcohol level and prevent the vehicle from starting if the level exceeds- Oh, so you don't get somebody else to blow the fucking machine. 0.02 .02 blood alcohol content. The cameras are there to ensure the driver conducts the test genuinely, and tampering with the cameras is a very serious offense. If you look at the camera face right there, and you just touch it, you can tip, you can feel the, the, the tape residue left on it. I told him you better stop doing it. I mean, I keep, I keep telling him he's tampering with it. I'm like, okay. Did you drive in here today? Yeah. While it wasn't confirmed that the driver personally tampered with the camera, the damage itself raised suspicions. Oh, the is office he gonna get a fucking breathalyzer? Now he's probably drunk right now. They returned with additional questions. With a backup officer now present, the situation started to escalate. He says my camera's disconnected. He's like, oh, the camera's disconnected. I was like, no, the camera's absolutely not disconnected. And if it is, I don't know anything about it. We got to get in the computer and check diagnostics on this. But then he tells the guy that it had sticker or tape or something over the, the camera part. And he starts telling him he can't do it because of that. Long story short, the guy got his money. He got paid in the... Oh, no! Oh, my God. Drunk driving to get your fucking camera fixed? That's broken because you wanted to drunk drive? Like, why is he at the mechanic shop? Ah, uh, he's shaking, dude. He's scared. I'm not nervous. I'm not nervous, dude. I'm You're frustrated. Shaking. Your pupils are pinpoint. Who cares? I'm high as hell. Is that what you want to hear? Can we get so to you the... drove here high as hell to get I'm a... not high. You just said. I was being sarcastic. I was just trying oh. to move this along. I'm not paid to be I, sarcastic. I, I, I got high after I got here. Well, you admitted. I got high after I got here. Yeah, no, that's the that's the funniest. Yo, Chad, it's full for plan. If you ever if you ever get in a drunk driving accident, just start just make sure that you're on camera drinking after the accident and be like, dude, I just got drunk after the accident. I didn't, you know, uh, no, I, no, I, I, I got drunk after after we got in the crash, you know, because I was upset about it. You just got high after you got here. And you didn't take that as sarcasm. Oh. The driver can't seem to stop making bad decisions. Firstly, calling the cops while potentially intoxicated. Then, admitting well, I think just being sarcastic with an officer is always just a fucking terrible idea. Like, you don't joke. Like, officers... Officers could joke with each other, but, like, if you're, like... If they're, like, questioning you and you're like, Yeah, I'm on fucking crack right now. I, I think they're gonna they're gonna kind of read that as uh you know serious regardless driving of how under the you influence say it. of drugs and later asserting that he was being sarcastic. Weird. I know. How are you gonna get here? Joe helping people drunk drive that actually doesn't work. If you drunk drive and get in an accident and then drink after the car accident, you're still gonna get arrested for a DUI. I'm not even high. Dude. What are you talking about? Put your hands on your back. For what? You're being detained. You said you're not For what? For what do I mean? Suspicion of narcotics. That's not, that's not illegal. You can't find your back. 
This is crazy. Isn't it? He was only being detained on suspicion of possession of narcotics. However, in addition to the series of bad decisions, he made another one, which made matters worse. Oh, did he hurt the officers? Brother, this is this is possession of one. narcotics? Possession? Where's the possession at? Where's your possession? Hey, have a seat. No, 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 no. Where's your possession at? Have a seat. No, dude. dude. Have a crazy. seat or you're gonna go to jail. You're, you're I trying to do that. Let me sit out here like a normal person. Did you want seat. me to... No, what's your suspicion? I'm going to ask you one last question. What's your suspicion? Uh, you saying you're actively fucking high? Sit down. Sit down. Dude, get the leg in. He's Actually, come again. on back out. Now you're getting searched and sent to arrest. Ah, oh, why am I getting searched? Obstruction of justice. Passing an officer without violence. I'm not resisting. Why is only the front part of his shirt wet? Like, I don't sweat there. Do y'all sweat there? I feel like my armpits would be sweating. He's just only fucking wet in the front neck part of his fucking shirt. An officer without violence. I'm not resisting. You, like, you just did. Work. How did I resist? Is it down the where you, this is where you kick your leg across the cop car as hard as possible, fucking shatter your shin, and be like, dude, see, what are you guys doing to me? I mean, what the fuck? That was... Uh, no, now I can't drive my car. Now, 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 I'm, now I need to get high. Hold up. What's that? A crack pipe? Yeah, no, my dude. I ain't playing your games. You're, 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 you're breaking the law. His situation deteriorated from being detained to now facing arrest for resisting. No, 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 dude. You know my dad's a head. You know my dad's FBI. I don't. You don't care. Yeah. President of the United States. And you're gonna still arrest me on these bullshit charges? Nah. If his dad was the president of the United States, they probably would care. If this was, if this. If this was uh, a president's son, they would probably, they would probably, this would probably not be happening. You know what he's no. doing's fucked up, man. Hey, let me no. talk to you. No. You know what Get he's doing's foot. fucked Get up. Get your foot in the car. Come on, dude. You know what he's doing's fucked up. They searched his vehicle and discovered an unidentified substance, which was later confirmed through testing to be marijuana. So you're being arrested for resisting without violence. Okay. Great. You got your body camera on, right? Yep. It's been recording this entire time. Okay, great. I'm taking it to trial. You're I swear to God, I'm taking a, it to trial. You're also getting a civil citation. Without so, violence. without being any charge, without anything charged against me, just your suspicion, I can be placed in handcuffs and put yes, back you in your car. My safety, absolutely. Absolutely, can. can I? Yep. I can sit on the curb right there, just like this, and you can do anything He's about so it. You're so nervous. Well, I'm taking it to trial. I swear to God, I'm court. taking it to That's trial. Fine. You're under arrest. I'll see you at the jail. Move your foot. He was booked to jail and was charged with resisting without violence and additionally received a civil citation for THC possession. What is a civil citation, though? I feel like that's not going to be... That's not going to be that big of a fucking deal. And he did say he got high after. What is it? What is a civil citation for THC possession? What does that even do? It's a criminal misdemeanor, maximum penalty of six months in car incarceration, a thousand dollar fine. Well, so it's in a state that weed isn't legal. Oh, of over the above amounts of marijuana. So maybe he didn't have enough. If you have less than 10 grams, it's a civil citation. What if you had like 10.1? You think they'd let that slide? Like you're at an airport and your bag's like 41 pounds, but 40 is the limit. Like, if I have, like, 10.1 grams of weed, are they going to be like, okay, you're over, right? If you're I slide him a fiver. I say, dude, just get, you know, you could keep a gram. You could keep a nug. Enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe. You might think that last suspect was a little off base for making jokes about being high, but... He brings out the scale. You're like, nah, wait again. Wait again. Wait until you meet Eric Sims. And then he grabbed my phone, slammed my phone on the ground, jacked me up on my shirt, and told me to get the fuck out of there. Yes, I want him arrested. On June 8th, 2022, a Wisconsin officer responded to a call at a business in La Crosse from an employee named Eric Sims reporting an assault. The officer made contact with Eric Sims, unaware of the kind of individual he was dealing with. Incident today at the officer? Yes, I want him arrested. Okay, well, before we get to any of that, I need to know what happened. All right. The owner called me about a call I did this morning. Mm -hmm. And she's trying to say that I could have towed the car. I tried to explain to her why I couldn't. She got mad, hung up on me. I came over here to try to, I was coming over here to talk. I got to the door 
<laughs> um, I was yelling at her. If I was a cop, I'd zone out. Dude, I feel like the people they talk to are the worst storytellers of all fucking eternity, dude. Like... Oh, so the, uh, I was there, and we were, like, uh, talking, and then I was, uh, you know, by my car, and I was kind of mad, and then this, bro, fucking lay it, just lay it out, lay it out, you know, what the fuck is this, this is just, like, chopping it up, it's like I'm, it's like I'm fucking time warping through the story, you're just throwing me in fucking two second intervals, like, I don't know what's going on right now, you're mad at a guy about something, she's trying to say that I could have told the, the, car. the car, I tried to explain to her, why I couldn't. She got mad, hung up on me. I came over here to try to, I was coming over here to talk. I got to the door. Mm -hmm. um, I was yelling at her. Mm -hmm. Her son came running out of the bathroom, jacked me up on my shirt and told me to get the fuck out of there. Fucking, he grabbed me by my shirt and pushed me off of the steps and pushed me into the truck that's right next to the steps. And then I- What? What? You were by your car and then you got pushed off steps into a car? What are, what are you talking about, bro? Like, what the fuck? I had hit the truck and then he grabbed my phone, slammed my phone on the ground. I went to go grab it so I was calling the police. He grabbed my phone again and he grabbed me by my shirt and holding my phone like that. I told him, I said, you know you're going to jail now. That's an assault. Eric's account matched what he had told dispatch, but the experienced cop couldn't just arrest the other employee, as Eric had requested, without hearing his side of things first. The officer proceeded to question the other employee, which appeared to be a right move considering the account provided by the employee. Hello. Hey. Are you Josh? Oh. Uh, no, Josh. Yes. Mind if I talk to you out here real quick? Yeah. Um, I was in the back room doing some stuff. Yeah, we he comes in the office and instantly, nothing out of his mouth but screaming, just instant screaming, top of his lungs. Um, I step out there and Shay, the other officer guys out there, um, we ask him immediately, you need to go. You need to go outside, we'll deal with this later. Uh, continue to scream. This is a story! See, I understand what he's fucking saying right now. Like, I, the other guy... So I was here and I want to tow the car. The car wasn't towed. I walked up there and pushed down the steps. I was, he was grabbing my shirt and my phone. And the, I was said, like, now you're going to jail. Because that's assault. And be in our face. So we opened the door, asked him to leave. There were discrepancies between the complainant's account and Josh's testimony, highlighting the necessity for cops to gather information from multiple people before taking action. As Josh- That's what your story time feels like? Yeah, because you guys get me all fucking topic by asking me stupid fucking questions. My story times would be fucking linear and make sense if a motherfucker didn't dono and ask me uh, to say happy birthday to their friend Ligma Balls or some shit halfway through. Gabe for the sub. Floating for the three. My dad did that once he got in a car crash and then drank an almost full thing of vodka in front of a cop. Said he was only drunk because of that. Nude flash. It didn't work. A full bottle of vodka? Dude, you have to go to the hospital because of that. Holy shit. Juicy and O2 for the sub. They for the three. Moldy for the five. Says love the streams. FW Goober live for the sub. Charlie for the three elaborated on the incident, the officer gained a clearer understanding of the situation and began to grasp the kind of person the complainant is. Guided, I'm, I'm gonna touch you, guided him out like this. Okay. And then, so he walked down the stairs. He tripped down the stairs. These on stairs his, here? No, oh. in, in the garage. Okay. He tripped yeah. down the stairs, kind of stumbled, dropped his phone, and that was that. We've had issues with him yelling before. We've had issues with him being violent before. Um, a while ago, he actually almost ran me and Shay over with his car. I just wanted him out, sure. and to be honest with you, he's a problem. He's a felon. Okay. Uh, I know he's had pe past issues in the past. Mm -hmm. I've given him as many chances right. as I can. Honestly, the only reason he's still here is because I said, let's give him a fair right. shake and right. a chance. Okay. 8.30 in the morning, coming in, instantly screaming at the owner, who's also a woman. I yeah. just don't understand where, where someone sure. thinks that's okay. The officer questioned more employees who corroborated the other employees' testimony, confirming Eric oh, and they all the same was story. the aggressor and had They don't have like a fucking security camera? I feel like that's a camera right there. A previous altercation with several other employees. The officer, having consulted all parties, proceeded to handle the matter in the most professional manner, but Eric was out for blood. So essentially, so you came here yelling and screaming, you're upset with Sue, I get it. Um, that's, that's not acceptable behavior it doesn't excuse what happened with josh so essentially if 
if you want to pursue charges, then you're also going to be charged with disorderly conduct. They don't want to pursue charges against you, but you can't come into a place of work yelling and screaming and causing a scene. Disorderly conduct for a place that I work. Okay, do what you guys got to do. Okay. Then. Is that what you're? Is that what you want I, done? Is that what you? Do you want to be charged with that and have him charged as well? Or it do don't matter. You can go ahead. Now that's wild to say. Fuck it. I'll I'll take a charge because I don't like that person that much. That now I want them charged as well. We both can go to jail. Can I park my car? Eric basically said he doesn't mind going to jail. But now he's gonna get sued because he's made, he he's falsely accusing somebody of something. Because if he gets arrested for disorderly conduct, he could fucking then turn around and fucking sue this guy. As long as his alleged assailant goes to jail too, which was very odd, as any person in their right state of mind would typically try to avoid jail. However, the confusion continued as Eric's subsequent actions became even more baffling. I'll have to make a phone call. I don't think anybody's going to go to jail, but you can, you can be charged with it. Hey, do you want to come down here and get my car? Because now they're talking about that I have to go to jail. You don't, you don't have to go to jail. <laughs> you know, you want to come down and get my car? Because he pushed me down the steps. He was holding my phone in my hand like this. And I told him, I said, you know, you're going to, you assaulted me. And so now you got to come get me. No, you don't got to get me. You got to get my car because... Uh, they're saying I'm gonna have to go to jail because Josh is going to jail. Kind of a whole thing, right? We gotta kind of both go together. So, if you want to kind of, you want to just go get him, you can go get him. You guys so, can get a signature bond. You don't have to go to jail. I'm on probation. Okay. So, you still don't have to go to jail. I want him to go to jail. What he fucking did, what he fucking did, put his hands on me and slam me in the chalk. Okay. You guys are not going to arrest him? That's bullshit. Eric seemed to have a jail wish, as he went as far as informing the cop about his probation status. He doesn't even look hurt, though. Like, wouldn't you have, like, a visible bruise? If you got body... If, you, if somebody body slammed you into a truck, you're going to have, like, a physical injury, right? Like, like it's not just going to be like, oh, I, I, I was in a little bit of pain. Like, dude, you're going to have a fucking welt. In an attempt to get himself and the other employee locked up, the cop had further conversations with Josh, telling him Eric wanted to press charges, which clearly didn't sit right with him. Right. I mean, he's a felon. He's right. trying to sell me weapons. He's right. got guns in his possession. I'm not trying to go down that rabbit hole. Right. Right. I just want him gone. Right. No, I no want that's what I told. I told my partner, that you guys just want him gone, you know, and just want to cut ties, I guess. So. Yeah. The cop, recognizing that the situation was a minor issue escalating due to their egos, went ahead and made a decision, which, from Eric's reaction, wasn't quite popular with him. Just based on the information we're getting inside, and based on the, the totality of what happened here today, you don't have to get arrested, he doesn't have to get arrested. What we're going to do is we're going to issue you both a disorderly conduct ticket. You're going to, how are you going to enter, he put his hands on me, so you're not going to arrest him. I for him you. putting his hands on me. I'm not today, no, just based on the okay, circumstances. Okay, can I have your supervisor come out, please? Yeah, I'll give him a call after. Right. <laughs> Bro, I hate motherfuckers that do that shit. Uh, if you're at, like, a Walmart, can you go get your manager, please? Thank you. Mm, go get your supervisor. Mm, yeah, let me go talk to your supervisor. Supervisor's gonna say the same fucking thing, right? The manager's gonna say the same fucking thing. Why would they ever change? Unless, like, the person's actually being a fucking idiot. All right, your ticket, okay? They both received the $187 ticket for disorderly conduct, much to Eric's dissatisfaction. As the officer went to write the tickets, Eric, not finished with the situation, decided he really needed that jail time. Go fucking stand over there! Get away from it! Came Don't over here. stand over there! Go stand over there and stop running your mouth! Just don't listen to him. Just, no, just, just, I, just would, don't I would like to do whatever I need yep, to do. Yep. That's annoying as fuck. This guy's getting a fucking two hundred dollar ticket when he didn't do anything. Yeah, I know. He just threatened no, me no, in front no, of the no, officer. No trespass. No. Yes. Well, why did you come out here though and go near him? Yeah, but you guys let him fucking act like that. Eric, put his hands on. Get in your car and drive away, okay? Things are done here. That's just bullshit. Eric, just drive away. You can get your stuff later, okay? None of them were taken to jail, but had to contend with the tickets for disorderly conduct instead. Come on, why did the cop have to break it up? It could have been funny. Could have been a could have been more interesting, more interesting encounter. I don't think we've ever seen anyone who wanted to go to jail as badly as Eric before. However, he just got let off with a ticket. The outcome was very different for the individual in the next case. Is everyone inside okay? What would you say when you're on the phone accidentally? 
He said that he killed two people, but he was talking about on the game. On January 5th, 2023, heavily armed deputies from the Yo, Boone... Yo, I'd start tweaking if I was this kid. ...County Sheriff's Department swiftly responded to a location following a 911 call in which the caller claimed to have killed two people. Upon arrival, they immediately drew their weapons, which made sense given the reported situation. So turn around. Turn around. Turn around. You got me covered. All right, just put your hands behind your back. I'm not going to cuff you right now. Do you have any weapons on you or anything sharp? Nope. The caller, Elijah Matthew, cooperated fully with the officers. However, despite Yo, his- Yo, he deadass butt dialed the cops. That is awful. Operation, the officers proceeded cautiously, conducting a pat down for their safety. As they began questioning <sighs> him, it started to appear that the situation might not be what they initially expected. What'd you say when you're on the phone accidentally? I can't remember. Oh, I remember there was a four minute phone call. What's your name, bud? Elijah. Okay, you can relax. Okay, so this was just an accident. You yeah, called 911. Yeah, Did you say you killed two people or something like that? Okay, how old are you? 17. You're 17. Do you have a driver's license or no? Uh, no. Okay. I don't have a license, really. Are you? Where, where's your parents at? Uh, work. No, okay. Oh my it God, appeared. he's home alone. <laughs> no. He's fucking playing Rainbow Six. He hears fucking gunshots. He's like, I hear sirens right now. What the fuck's going on? He's the walking outside. They're all just pointing guns at him. Caller accidentally dialed emergency services while playing a video game, which was quite reckless, as many victims of swatting haven't been. Ooh, ooh, oh, bro, ooh. I can see him. Oh, what the fuck just happened? I just dropped my fucking. I just dropped my drink all over my fire. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Game, I had my headset on, and uh, I butt dialed the police officer on accident. And I, I just, you know, I was in the game. You know how, you know how I have to open the game. And so four of them came here. Do you want me to talk to your mom? Uh, yeah, you yeah. can. You're not in any trouble, man. Uh, yeah. If it's an accident. Hey, yeah. is this Elijah's mom? Okay. Yeah. Hey, so what happened is, I guess, he's saying that he was playing a video game, and... In the process of accidentally calling 911, he said that he killed two people, but he was talking about on the game. So we thought that there was a double murder, so we showed up to your house with a bunch of- Turns out it's actually just a kid in copper. Wait, hold up. Let me let me get back to you a second. Let me get back to you in a second here. Did you even win the game? No, he lost. He actually, he actually didn't even win the game here, so... Uh, I don't know. I'm. It's kind of fucking stupid right now. This kid's saying he got two kills here. He didn't even win the game. He's copper. <sighs> What's your KD ratio? Oh. His KD is about a .6. Ooh, I've never seen something so bad. That's why we're here talking to your son, okay? So there's nothing to be worried about. Okay. Yeah, I we're, call. yeah we're just trying to... We're, we're just doing our due diligence here, trying to figure everything out and make sure that everybody's okay because we have to do that when we get a 911 call. So, right, right. we just wanted to inform you, um, are you nearby or no? No, I'm in Highland Heights at work. Okay, well, we would like to, uh, just check out the inside of the house, if that's okay, just to make yeah, sure that- Yeah, every... put the dogs away? Yeah, yeah, you're saying- the kid's like, oh shit, my dad, my dad pen's in the fucking, my dad pen's sitting on the gaming console, he's like, alright, hold up, let me just go run in real, let me go run inside real quick, just, you know, tidy things up real quick, just, you know, I didn't, I didn't expect guests to be here was telling us that the fucking throws like a four foot bong out the window <laughs> glass just shatters all over the fucking sidewalk dogs need to be put up first so i just wanted to oh that was weird to you before so we can get your permission okay yep that's totally fine all righty well thank you very much right. thank you uh bye all right here we go put him away you got the side. okay hold on for me let me just get my supervisor on on speed with us here his story seemed to have checked out after the cop's conversation with his mom. However, the cop still had to be very thorough and leave no stone unturned. Following a briefing with his supervisor, a few officers went with Elijah to check in the house. Unfortunately, we couldn't show the search as the Boone County Sheriff's Office regulations prohibit video coverage well, yeah. inside residences. The cops found nothing suspicious, which corroborated Elijah's account of event. The officer- Yeah, and then they probably just dipped. Zimmet for the sub, Lil Biggie and Zahn for the sub, Randy and Gabe for the sub. All right, next video. That was a W vid. Uh, why kids don't go outside anymore? Hold on, I gotta piss before we even fucking do this chat. I know I've been pissing a lot. I've been slugging water. Count me down thirty seconds. I'll be back. Oh, I'll play a different song because everybody gets fucking mad about this one. Sorry. Oh, oh, hold up.
All right. Oh. For less people bitching about that fucking song. All right, next bed. Uh, why kids don't go outside anymore? You guys have sent this fucking video in the video suggestion tab 500 times. 500 times. So I feel like we need to watch it just because uh, that many people want me to watch it. Uh, don't really know uh, what it's about outside of this. It seems like there's a bunch of sections and shit. But, you know, uh, we'll give it a watch. Flurf Design, six days ago. 1.9 million views. Very for the three. Probably a weird question, but how old were you when you started working out? What workouts did you do? You do? Uh, I am not going to go into a two-hour explanation of what workouts I do. I'll tell you my split is back, biceps, abs, day one, chest, triceps, shoulders, day two, day, uh, le day three, legs, abs. Uh, and day four, rest, day five, repeat the cycle. I started working out probably when I was like 12. Probably started weightlifting when I was like 13. Children and teenagers. Why kids don't go outside anymore? You want an answer? You want an answer from uh, Joe Bart? Uh, probably because it's uh, scary and boring. I think those are the two answers. Number one, video games. Number two, a lot of cars, more people, higher chance of getting uh, murdered, kidnapped, uh, etc. Children and teenagers these days aren't going outside as much as before. Fifty years ago, do they mean outside? Do they mean outside like like outside like just walking around? Or outside, like, they're just not doing sports and shit. Nearly half of all kids in America walk or bike to school. Today, it's less than 13%. This is largely due to the lack of independence children have. Parents are more worried than ever about letting their kids go out on their own, because... I don't know about that. Why don't kids walk to school anymore? Probably because people don't live half a mile from their fucking class anymore. Some kids go to schools that are, like, 45 minutes away. Look at all these kidnappers outside. Look at them. However, stranger kidnappings are astonishingly rare, and these cases are always sensationalized in the media. The real threat to the safety of children are cars. Vehicle collisions are the number one cause of death among children and teenagers. And some of it, some of it, not a lot of it, some of it, motherfuckers just run it across the street. I almost ran over a kid the other day. That would have been pretty bad. Him and his friend, he had a big gulp. He had he had the fucking long wavy hair and he had a fucking dumb his dumbass backpack hanging down to his fucking shins. And he had a fucking slurpee that was like 45 ounces. And he just literally the light is the light is like green on my end. It is red on the crosswalk for him. And I see this motherfucker as I'm pulling up and I, I slam on my brakes. But I see him, and he's going like this with his friend. And then he, he he literally goes like this. Across the road! Somebody was making a left-hand turn, almost fucking killed him. And then he him and his friend make it across, and he's like, <laughs> and he starts laughing, and I fucking see him as I'm driving by. I'm like, bro, like, you just fucking, you ran two miles an hour across a fucking four-lane road. And almost got murdered because you didn't wait for the fucking crosswalk. I jaywalk, you know? Everybody jaywalks. But, like, on a fucking, on, on a borderline highway? Kill like a big road? Killing thousands and injuring tens of thousands every year. When you look at how our cities are- dead ass like that! He was on this side. And he just, wa he like penguin waddled across. His backpack was so, so fucking low. I was like, dude, pull the tabs. Your backpack should be on your back, not your fucking legs. Designed, none of this is surprising. Modern suburbs, and especially American suburbs, are car dependent. Neighborhoods are endless mazes of single-family homes with streets laid out in winding cul-de-sacs. Businesses sit behind giant parking lots with wide multi-lane roads full of high-speed car traffic. This forces you to cross oh. these big intersections designed for the flow of vehicles rather than the safety of people. This creates a vicious cycle where the dangerous streets make parents drive their kids more, but by doing so, they're adding more cars to the problem. Recently, the channel Oh The Urbanity made a video about Miami, and they caught this footage of a school bus having to stop in an angle and block traffic just so kids can safely get off. Because drivers literally would not stop. You would get arrested if you didn't stop. Dude, I'll stop for a bus. I remember one day... I pulled up to a bus, like, I, I was pulling up, and I, um, 
It was probably two cars behind a bus, right? It was like a bus, two cars, and then me. I'm telling I'm already fucking off to a terrible start on this story. School bus, two cars, me. We're driving. He throws on the yellow blinky lights, and I go, Fuck! Because you already know you're about to be sitting still for the next 10 fucking minutes because the kid in the back of the bus doesn't know what he needs to fucking get off or some stupid shit. You know, like, if it's like a high schooler, they're about to just run off the bus. It's not even a fucking problem. This bus has, like, fucking toddlers on it. And so the parent needs to be there for the kid to get off the bus. I am waiting for five minutes. The light that I'm sitting under, and I'm in the middle of the fucking intersection, by the way, when this motherfucker turns on his goddamn uh, little blinky lights. It goes, it's red, green, red, green, red. And then, then the mom comes fucking waddling out. Just like, like a school lunch lady. And then like the kid walks out. I'm like, yo, throw the kid out of the fucking bus. Throw the kid out the bus, right? You got a 30 second timer. 30 second timer, you either throw the kid out the car or the kid's going to the fucking, the school bus area and the mom's gonna have to go fucking pick him up. Oh my God, the mom was late. I wanted, I wanted to roll down my window and be like, what were you taking a fucking shit? Are you, uh, it, the, the traffic was insane. There was like a thousand cars behind us. We were just at a dead standstill on a fucking four, la four lane road for like five minutes. We're just sitting there. Because the mom didn't come out. Oh my God. Oh my God. So when everything's too far away and crossing the street is too dangerous, children have zero independent mobility until they turn 16 and get a driver's license. Most of the world sets their legal driving age to 18 and for good reason. Teenage drivers are four times more likely to crash than adults, mainly due to immaturity and inexperience. But in most of- Ah, uh, I don't know about inexperience. I think it's cause they- you get a car, like my, when I- when I got my car, uh, you have to, to get a GDL, uh, in New Jersey, you have to be 17, not 16. Some states are 16. Uh, some of you could get, like, a fucking farmer's license when you're, like, 14. Anyways, um, the day I got my car, I went on a back road and went fast as I possibly could. Like, the first day I got my car, I went, I'm gonna floor it. And went 120 down a fucking back road. Like... I think it's just, like, people being stupid. Not inexperienced in the sense of, oh, they don't know what they're doing. It's more so they're just being dumb on purpose. In North America, teenagers as young as 16 can drive unsupervised. And in some places, it's as young as 14. If we had viable alternatives to driving, our legal driving age wouldn't have to be so low. And teenagers wouldn't have to risk their lives just so they can have some independence. Until then, children have to rely on mommy and daddy to chauffeur them everywhere. This is where the soccer mom stereotype comes from. Someone who spends all their time driving their kids to and from different activities. In car-dependent suburbia, dropping off or picking up kids from school becomes this massive ordeal, with cars backing up for miles of traffic. These schools may be far away and are sometimes in rural locations, but this is primarily due to sprawling car-centric design. Due to the low density of the suburbs, Schools have to consolidate into fewer, but God, large- imagine walking up that fucking hill. Uh, uh, I'd give up about one-third of the way through. Your ...facilities that are farther away, rather than having more smaller schools that are closer. Regardless, schools being in the rural places does not justify the lack of infrastructure. This- Are kids supposed to cross this highway to get to school? Uh, they wait for the little crosswalk to show, uh, the white guy go. And then that's when you cross, right? And when it's the red hand, that's... You don't move, right? So, instead of just hitting a diagonal across the entire fucking school, they wait for the crosswalk and they go here, and then they wait again and they go here, right? Not justify the lack of infrastructure. This beautiful video by Bicycle Dutch shows how majority of all children Oh, in I thought it was the other way? You'd think so with how people just run across the fucking road when it's the red hand. Netherlands bike themselves I'm to that guy. the school, even if it's miles away in a rural area. They can do this because they've built safe cycling infrastructure throughout all their cities and the entire country. We might not build bike- You also just don't have anywhere to put your fucking bike, dude. In colleges they do. If you bike to your high school, 
your high school probably has a fucking one bike rack for like four bikes. Bike lanes across the whole country like the Dutch, but even if a fraction of these kids were able to walk or bike to school, it would make a huge difference for both parents and the development of children. A 2002 psychology study asked elementary school students to draw a map of their path to school, and the results were just sad. The child who walked to school on their own produced this accurate detailed drawing with various landmarks along the way. The child who walked with an adult got the orientation wrong, but still roughly identified the right directions. But this is the drawing from the child who was driven to school. Yo, bitch, I had no idea where I was when my mom used to drive me to school. That is fucking facts. Yo, if they fucking- the second I got my car, I fucking understood it, right? Because I did that shit. But I remember when I was like, when I was like in fucking middle school, dude, and I was in like, fuck, like, and I wasn't taking the bus for a little bit, and I was in like fucking fifth grade. Yo, I had no, if you, it, it wasn't even far. Like, I, if, you, if you dropped me off and you were like, you gotta find your way home, and it was like three turns that you had to make, I would, I would just be like, I, I, me no, no. Me no, no. I know where McDonald's is. I know where, I know where Wendy's is. That's it. Right. Nothing else. Studies in Switzerland from the 90s found that children who freely played in their neighborhood on their own spent- Fifth grade in middle school? Yeah, in my school, middle school was fifth grade. Uh, Exiles for the sub. Irish and Kevin for the sub. For the three. Love the stream. Watch all your videos to take off my mind off things and just relax. Dub. Romper for the three. Tomorrow will mark five months since I stopped self-harming. Dub which followed my sexual abuse at 10 years old. I'm 16 turning 17, and I've moved out for a month, and things are looking bright. For anyone struggling right now, I want you to know that it will get better. Well, thank you for the fucking nice message. I'm sorry you had to fucking deal with all that shit. That is awful. Uh, but, I mean, that's great that you're five months uh, away from self-harm, and you're moving out, uh, or you've been moved out for a month. That's good. Chombo for the three. You should explain the jiggle machine now. Exiles for the sub. Twice as much time outside, were way more active, had more than twice as many friends, and had better motor and social skills compared to kids who played in a park under parental supervision. Without independent mobility, children don't get as much exercise, contributing to the major child obesity crisis in the U.S. Bitch, people aren't obese in the U.S. because they don't walk to class. People are obese in the U.S. because they're eating fucking Twinkies and fast food every fucking day. And the majority of kids don't eat more than fucking one vegetable in their entire lives and don't even eat fruit. That's why people are obese is because their diet's fucking awful. It's not the fact that they don't walk half a mile to fucking class. Nobody does sports. Everybody plays video games and no one wants to fucking do anything. The issue is that sports are only considered meaningful if you have a potentiality of going pro. And that's it. Nobody treats sports as a means of having fun, competitive accessibility to, you know, working out. It's more so, hey, if you want to run track or play football and you're not going to go pro, you shouldn't fucking play. Alternatively, I do have the take that playing sports in college makes sense if you think you're going to go pro. But when you're in high school, I think everybody should get in involved into a sport that they deem as useful. But when you're in college, I think that's a bit different. I think people should do like rec clubs and leagues. But if you're in like, uh, fucking college and you're spending six hours a day practicing for a sport that you're not getting paid with, you don't have a scholarship for, that's different, right? If you're going D1, D2 and you're still not going to go pro and you're getting money for it, that's whatever. But I think when people are going to college and they're dedicating all their time to a sport that isn't giving them anything back, I think that's a bit different. But just broadly, that's why American kids are obese. is shitty diet. They don't work out. They don't play sports. Mido for the three. When are you going to start doing weekly Fall Guys streams again? Maybe in the summer? It also prevents them from, you know, going out and socializing. Studies show that children with less independence are lonelier as they have a weaker sense of community, lower sense of safety, and have fewer activities with friends. The emptiness of car-dependent suburbia also makes it feel more dangerous. In Jane Jacobs' book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, she explains the concept known as Eyes on the Street. It basically means that vibrant and lively streets feel safer as there are more people around and thus more eyes to deter bad behavior. This is why dark alleyways or streets at nighttime feel dangerous. But Yo, that is actually facts though. Because like when you see somebody walking on a sidewalk, they're like one guy. It's never multiple people. 
And then when there's one other person, it skeezes you out because you're like, dude, what if they stab me? Without people regularly walking by or casual onlookers watching the street, suburbia feels lonely and creepy. If a child were to be kidnapped outside, no one would notice. Over the past few decades, this sense of danger has changed our cultural attitudes towards children being out on their own to the point where it can literally land you in jail. Like Nicole Ganey, who was arrested and charged with child neglect for letting her son walk to the park alone. Or Deborah Harrell, who spent 17 days in- She got arrested for child neglect? Like, I think that's kind of whack, but... Arrested for child neglect? I think that'd be like, dude, why would you do that? But, I mean, how far is the park? Somebody redeem Scream? Refund it. I'm not doing another one today. People are spamming too, so it makes me not want to do it. Neglect for letting her son walk to the park Seven's alone. too young. Oh, no, no. Seven, yeah, you should not be without a parent. But I'm saying, like, if the park's, like, two blocks away from their house, I don't think the mom should be arrested for letting her son walk to the park, you know? I think that's more so a, hey, don't do this again, warning type thing. Or Deborah Harrell, who spent 17 days in prison and like now that kid, like, she gets arrested, now the kid might be in, like, fucking foster care. Early lost custody of her child, all for letting her daughter play in the park alone while she was working at a nearby McDonald's. An even more ridiculous case was Jackie Kendrick, who got reported to Child Services for letting her two kids play in her own backyard while she watched from inside. What? This was Jackie Kendrick, who got reported to Child Services for letting her two kids play in her own backyard while she watched from inside. Some schools in the U.S. Who the hell would report somebody to, to Child Protective Services? for their kid being in their own backyard. Even have rules not allowing anyone to walk at all. So even if you are with your child, you might end up like Jim Howie from Tennessee, who got arrested for picking his kids up from school on foot instead of driving a car. Why would he get arrested for that? You're walking home from class with your kid? Even if a child could walk or bike around on their own, car dependent suburbia is bland. There's almost nothing to do and nowhere to go apart from a park or the shopping. What is he getting arrested for? How are you getting arrested for fucking walking your kid home? Well, additionally, our public spaces are actively designed specifically to keep kids away. An example of this are those metal studs that are placed on benches or railings to prevent skateboarding. Many malls, amusement parks, and even Chick-fil-A are flat out banning teenagers from entering without parental supervision. When the streets are too dangerous and there aren't any places to hang out in, is it a surprise that kids these days want to stay at home all day, playing video games, and watching Skibbity Toilet? Social media apps like TikTok basically serve as online public spaces where people can share their voices in an open environment. However, this is just as problematic as Elon Musk saying that Twitter will be the digital town square. With the recent motions to ban TikTok in the US, there's a critical lack of true public spaces that are accessible to young people. Car Dude, deadass, there are no parks, no fun places to go, no, no like public fields where motherfuckers can play sports and shit. It's like just roads and then businesses, and that's it. There's nowhere where you're just like, hey, you want to go hang out in the fucking local field or whatever the hell that would be? Lopex for the sub, Craddock for the sub. Car dependency in North America is not an inevitable thing. Suburbia doesn't have to be built this way. It's possible to make our streets safer and encourage more outdoor activity by changing our infrastructure. This means narrowing streets, installing- And add a, yeah, add a fucking bike lane or two, buddy! Oh my god! It's like the majority of roads don't even have a sidewalk. You, I see motherfuckers. I've, I've ridden my bike on the, uh, uh, like around before, and there's no sidewalk. You're just riding on the fucking road. I'm about to get hit by a car. A million cars zooming by. They don't even see you. Add a fucking bike lane or two. God damn. See, that looks so nice. Now you're not even worried about that shit. You could just fucking vibe. That makes sense protected bike lanes, and adding traffic homing measures to slow down cars and prevent collisions. We also need to change our zoning laws to allow higher density houses and small businesses to be built in the suburbs so that people- Add some badminton! Add some badminton nets while we're at it! Why don't we get some pickleball going on here? 
Maybe some cor maybe some public cornhole tournaments? I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's only fucking basketball court and fucking soccer net. Oh my god, can we come up with something else? People can live More options, please. Closer to amenities. These changes don't only benefit children. When a city is safe and comfortable enough for kids, then it's safe and comfortable for everyone. If you wouldn't let your child ride in this bike lane by themselves, then no one will, because it's not designed properly. Period. That is a shitty bike lane. The motherfuckers are just going into the bike lane. This is why in the few remaining walkable neighborhoods that do exist in North America, you will see lots of children walking to and from school all by themselves. This is also very common in East Asian cities, which they've achieved by having good public transit and dense urban development that creates eyes on the street. Not to mention the amount of pedestrian space you find, which provide attractive public spaces for teenagers to hang out. All of these things are completely possible to build in North America. So now kids in the U.S. just be posted up by a Walmart. Chilling in the Walmart parking lot. All the way in the back, just... Just chilling. Nothing else to do. Fucking riding a bike around, maybe. Maybe strolling the aisles for a little bit. Getting, getting a snack. Walking back out. But we just don't. Laws like zoning codes or parking requirements make it illegal to build anything other than car-dependent suburbs. We also continue to throw money at expensive road infrastructure, leaving almost nothing for- I hate highways that are this fucking big, dude. It's so annoying. Being in like a nine or an eight or nine lane highway is like fucking awful. Pedestrian or trans- It doesn't fix the traffic either. Because then, like, you're like, oh, more cars could be on the road. Yeah, but then when a dickhead over here needs to get all the way to the other side of the fucking road, he's about to pull a fucking Jersey slide and not even check who's behind him, just slide over. It projects. Car calls you're going to slowly merge your way over. It's like playing Crossy Road. Sure, it's so prevalent that many people simply believe that anything other than cars are inherently worse. Because, yeah, when you spend ludicrous amounts of money subsidizing highways and suburbs, of course driving is going to be the only option. What? So even when bike lanes or public transit projects are- And we got the shittiest public transit- Let me say that. Why ain't- Why we- Why don't we have bullet trains? Huh? Why don't we have- Why don't we have cool trains that people get on and go places and it's like really fast? Why- And then it's like five dollars. It's like five schmeckles to go to a fucking more state, state to state in other countries. But here, you gotta pay a bunch of gas and fucking go somewhere else. And the trains you get on these days in the United States look like they are coal-powered. It looks like somebody's standing in the back shoveling fucking coal so the train moves. Pose. It was about four miles an hour. I feel like I could outwalk a train in the U.S. You get tons of excuses from NIMBYs about all the traffic you'll cause or where am I gonna park my car? These people really like to blame the problems that cars create on other modes of transportation. Is your city running out of money and on the verge of bankruptcy? Clearly, it's because of all those bike lanes. Uh, don't, don't look at all those billions of dollars. Yeah, that you know what makes mad fucking money? Parking lots, bitch. Nobody ever thinks about that. Nobody ever thinks about that, though, right? You own a parking garage? Oh my god, $10 to park? $10 to park for the day? Holy fuck. You in a five you in a five story parking garage, you know how many fuck you know how much fucking money you're gonna make for just owning a facility? We're about to spend on the highway. That, that, that's not it. Most big of parking. Big parkings taking up the United States chat. These are policy issues. Policies made by groups of old people sitting in a government building, which are then followed by some other old people who call themselves planners and engineers. So to actually make changes and improve And hey, let's get rid of lobbying, huh? Why do why are you allowed why are companies allowed to pay politicians? That doesn't make sense. That seems like bribery. Prove our cities, we need more civic engagement. Currently, most people who vote and attend city council meetings are at least 50 years old. The direction our cities are going in is being determined by a bunch of boomers. Cycling is an important mode of transportation. You know, it helps us reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Lies, 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 lies. You know, actually, you must greenhouse gas. Why don't you tell Taylor Swift to stop driving her fucking plane everywhere? Why? Oh, my God. Yo, it's all the fucking, it's all the fucking old people, bro, in this fucking crowd right now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But I think Jen. Yo, 
Yeah, boo, boo. They're that dickhead that's parked in a fucking two-lane park, like a two-spot parking lot like this, and they're fucking lifted F-250. Just fucking sideways, like just ripping that. Like, come on, man. Gen Z and even sometimes millennials are underrepresented in this issue. I truly believe that younger people want more watchable cities and we have the power to make it a reality. This is partly why I started making these videos in the first place. Our cities have a huge impact on younger people and we deserve to have a say on how they're built. Even if you're not a professional planner or don't know what exclusionary zoning means. It's time to stop making excuses for our bad urban design and ask ourselves. Do we want our city? Yeah, if you're the type of person to be in like a public like school meeting and you're just going to be like when somebody brings out greenhouse gases, you're that parent that goes, lies, lies. They should kick you the fuck out. It's not even a freedom of speech thing. It's just a respect thing, right? You could have your time when you could ask a question, right? But when they're giving the speech and they're talking, just shut the fuck up, right? You know, like let them talk. And then after when they open up the board for questions, you could say, I... I actually think the earth is flat, you know, and then that's where you could have your little minion time to shine rather than just being a lies. The farmer's almanac. The farmer's almanac's been uh, correct about a majority of things. It snowed six inches last year and the almanac said it would snow seven. Beans for the sub, hudlums for the sub, Santee for the three. Is it just me? Is it hard to eat? Yeah, is it hard to eat without watching YouTube? Official and Birch for the sub. I hate eating if I'm not watching anything. It's just boring. You're just staring at your food and shit. Uh, all right, next video. Lock in here. Oh God. <sighs> the D'Amelio experiment failed, and now they won't go away. Lock in. Fiddle for the three. Not my message sending for Aiden. Hi Joe. You probably won't see this, but when I was seven or eight, I had to get brain surgery. And when I was 12, I had a brain aneurysm. Now I'm 15, and I play paintball every Sunday. And P.S. I designed shoes for Nike Freestyle 2018. That's dope. Dylan for the sub. And I'm sorry you had to get fucking brain surgery and had a goddamn brain aneurysm. But, I mean, it's good that you know you're being active now and you're able to do the things you want to do. The D'Amelio experiment failed. Now they just won't go away. There's probably one thing that comes to mind when you hear the name Charlie D'Amelio, and that's TikTok. In March of 2020, she became the number one most followed TikToker in the world, and for most of you, that's all she will ever be. However, her and her family have tried just about every career. Whenever I think of Charlie D'Amelio, I think of Mark D'Amelio. He's like the first person that enters my mind. Just Mark. Good old Marky, Marky Mark. Mark D'Amelio. I think about his hair imaginable since their meteoric rise to fame, yet they are still known as being famous for… nothing. Today we are going to look at the incredible story of a normal American family who was launched into fame for no reason, and how they are destroying their family trying to entertain an audience that does not care about them. The I don't know why the D'Amelios don't take the 30 fucking million dollars that they made and just disappear because that is exactly what I would do if I had an entire family that made millions of dollars off of uh, TikTok. Uh, I would immediately dip. Uh, I would say, this was fun, right? I did my Renegade a few times. Thanks for the sponsorships. Thanks. I hope you guys had fun watching, you know, and then skedaddle. You're close to them? You think I make as much as the fucking D'Amelios? Every second video that Charlie D'Amelio posts is a fucking ad that she probably got paid half a million dollars to post. I make fucking schmeckles in comparison to Charlie D'Amelio. And I'm not saying I don't make fucking good money. I make good money. But those people make fucking uh, ba -ba -ba millions! The D'Amelios lived a comfortable existence in a traditional New England suburb. Their parents- I got YouTube though, yeah, and Charlie D'Amelio has, I am the biggest creator on this app, pay me half a million dollars to sponsor your post. Okay, Hand, hands it over, right? If you're the biggest creator on a platform, you will make so much money. It, it doesn't even matter if she doesn't fucking get views. You're just the biggest creator on the app, people want the biggest creator on the app. Suburb. Their parents were already rich before the fame, as the sisters attended the King's School in Stamford, Connecticut, which cost $50,000 per year to attend high school. Char Who the fuck is paying 44 grand to send their stupid kid to kindergarten? Oh my god. Oh my god. I understand private schools. 
right? Like, I went I went to a Catholic school. It was nowhere near this amount of money, and I had a grant to go there. I went there for fucking dirt cheap. Like, oh my god, 40 grand to go to a fucking kindergarten. What the fuck are they learning? Calculus? Charlie describes her life before TikTok as normal. Like, I would understand you paying maybe go to, like, a, a si sixth grade and up. I could say, yeah, you might have a better education. Fucking kindergarten. Thousand dollars per year to attend high school. Charlie describes her life before TikTok as normal. I would go to school, go to dance, do my homework, and go to bed. It was pretty much like every other teenager's life. Charlie downloaded TikTok like anyone else to distract their mind from the mundaneness of everyday life. She uploaded her first video in March of 2019, which was her and a friend lip syncing to a random soundbite. She didn't expect anyone but her friends to watch her videos, considering she had a deep passion for dance, competing as a competitive dancer since she was a toddler. TikTok was the obvious outlet to post fun dance videos, but she could have never predicted what would happen next. In July 2019, on her way to dance class, Charlie posted a duet of her following the choreography of a user named Move With Joy. The video instantly went viral, and her notifications blew up during class. I had like seven followers, but when she picked up her phone after class, she had 2,000. Although Charlie claimed she never wanted attention nor was trying to be famous, after her first taste of virality, she prioritized TikTok like someone who did it. Yeah, every motherfucker says they post TikToks to post TikToks for fun, but the second you have a TikTok get like fucking 50k views, you're like... Okay, you know, maybe, maybe this, maybe I, maybe I should post a little bit more. It as a full time. Dead ass, that's what happened, bro. I that's how I started. That's how I started TikTok. I did a stupid trend that I thought was funny, and it got like fucking five thousand views. And then I did another one, and it got like twenty thousand views. And I was like, huh, this is kind of fun. And then I, uh, you know, started making content. Dylan Shark and Cosmo the Sub, fiddle for the three job. She posted every day, sometimes multiple times per day, and very quickly she gained hundreds of thousands of followers. Although she was oh a- Oh my god, I remember that. When she had the Black Lives Matter as her profile picture, and everybody was like, when Charlie changes it, it's gonna be World War III. I don't even remember when she changed it, but I remember she had it, and then everybody was like, dude, the second she changes that, everyone's gonna call her a racist thousands of followers. Although she was a skilled dancer, it's not like she was doing Jabberwockies level moves that would impress you. In fact, you wouldn't be able to tell that she was a skilled dancer from the mediocre moves she posted on the app. So why was she so popular? Well, even she didn't know. I wish I could give everyone an explanation as to what happened, but I have no idea. I'm just doing- But she sold her soul to the Illuminati! Right, chat? Right, chat? It's not just like luck coupled with the fact of consistency of posting coupled with the fact of, you know, it's just like uh, the audience uh, she she found in a niche. No, she she definitely sold her soul to the Illuminati. No, 100 percent. No, 100 percent. No, yeah. Yeah, the D'Amelios definitely eat eat babies and shit. Yeah, no, they definitely do blood sacrifices. Yeah, no, that's definitely what it is. That's sarcasm for the people that didn't understand that. Doing what I do every day and posting it, I guess. It's very insane to me, as it is for everyone else watching. At the time, the app was dominated by young users. TikTok classified more than a third, roughly 16.6 .6 million, of its 49 million daily users in the United States as being 14 years old or younger. Charlie was 15 years old at the time, making her appealing to the age group of the most active users. Since it was working, she just kept posting, kept trying to grow and see what happens. But her being popular became somewhat of a joke. The Charlie D'Amelio challenge was a huge trend where people would overreact to her incredibly average TikToks. In a never-ending- Oh my god, this is like when I downloaded TikTok. I remember this shit. Ironic loop, people were going viral reacting to her videos, which made her even more viral, which led to even more people asking, why is she famous? Making fun of her became an easy way to gain millions of views, but some things she did were genuinely cringe, like her very first YouTube video intro. Hey guys, it's Charlie, and I'm super excited to be sharing with you my first- Bro, my first YouTube video is fucking cringe. You can't, you can't, you can't diss somebody for being cringe when it's like their first year doing social media. Yeah, okay, that is wild. She hit the renegade, like, in her first video, but if you pull up my first- Dude, my first video is awful. Like, awful. Uh, I don't even want to watch it, but now I have to do it. Now I have to show it. Oh, it's fucking dude. I, I always loved them. For Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Vibe Talks on YouTube. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, like, shut up. 
Shut up. Fuck. Every YouTube video on my YouTube channel. As you can imagine, this became a huge meme. Hi, this is Charlie, and I'm super excited to be sharing with you my first ever YouTube video on my YouTube channel. Hey guys, my name's Jay. My dad left me at six. Not many people were making money on this app at the time, but in 2019, being a full-time social media personality was a realistic career path. So she definitely had that in the back of her mind and kept pushing along. Yeah, they then, had like no sponsors. That was, she was like, she blew up before they had like brand deals. Like TikTok was just literally a social media app with like no monetization capability at all for the first, until like fucking late 2020. One dance defined the rest of Charlie's like career. At, like, like, not, I wouldn't want to say at the start of COVID, but like in the midst of COVID is when people were like, okay, yeah, we could fucking put money into TikTok. Here. In October 2019, she performed a dance called The Renegade, which was a popular trend. God, you remember the content houses? Oof. I remember they got a video about that. The fucking, uh, it was like uh, Bryce Holiday, the Sway House. And uh, the TikTok house, and they all wore, like, white shirts. And it was like, holy shit, this is, like, the fucking... Uh, oh, oh, my God, what was it called? What was it called? The Hype House. I need to find the original image of that. Dude. And it had Addison Ray, uh, Dixie, Charlie. I don't even know. I don't know half... I don't know her, him, 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 him. That looks like Jack Doherty. Little Huddy. Oh my fucking god. That guy just re-entered my mind. Oh my god. I forgot about that guy for fucking years. Holy shit. Lil Huddy. Oh my god. What is he doing with his life now? I don't know. Probably making music or something. Floating for the three. I was never TikTok famous, but I got a good following in 2021. Stressing me the fuck out, so I ended up making 1k off of it and then dipping. Romper for the thousand biddies. Won't be here for the next two streams. I've gone snowboarding, but I'm still watching your VODs. Uh, but WStream stream live your content. Thank you, Cousin Upper, for the sub, Shark, and Dylan for the sub. Coinciding with the K-Camp song called Lottery. The simplistic moves made every teenager on the internet want to give it a try. She was already popular, but this exploded her to over 5 million followers on TikTok. Lottery became the first sound on the platform to reach 20 million videos. If you were unfamiliar with the app, you would think this was the only TikTok- Oh, this is brain rot. Nah, this is brain rot, To bro. reach 20 million videos. If you were unfamiliar with the app, you would think this was the only TikTok- Wow dance just like 50 people <laughs> doing the same fucking dance charlie would post multiple videos per week doing this one dance it is now four years later and some people still only know her as the tiktok girl who does this dance by the end of 2019 she had 18 million followers her sister did yeah, i never understood why they would do she probably did the renegade like 50 times i never understood that like imagine if i made the same rant and just reposted it like 15 times You'd be like, dude, you've already, like, some of you guys, if I mention anything I've talked about before, you guys will fucking hoard me about it. You'll be like, dude, you fucking said this. You fucking said this. Now they're just posting the same exact dance fucking 30 times. Dixie had a few million followers. The money, though, but they weren't making money then. The creator fund, I don't even know if the creator fund was a thing. And even her mother and father had TikTok accounts with hundreds of thousands of followers. The D'Amelio family was a full-blown business now, and it was time to capitalize on it. Charlie got to step into Hollywood and voice act in the animated children's film Stardog and Turbo Cat. The family signed to United Talent Agency in January of 2020 and began receiving massive business opportunities. Bro, I worked with UTA. I forgot about that. Did I work with UTA? No, I didn't work. What was it? It's either Talent X. I think I worked with Talent X, which like managed the Sway guys for a little bit. Charlie got to meet and collaborate with her idol, Jennifer Lopez. So the next week, you guys as a family are going to the Super Bowl. We have four tickets to the Super Bowl. Maybe lose my shit a little bit more, hey? Hey, you guys are going to the Super Bowl, $50,000 seats. What? <laughs> no way. <laughs> the Super Bowl? Why are you still staring at me? It was probably already pre-planned. That's why the reaction was a bit lackluster. Airfare on every single event. And you get to go spend time with J-Lo. 
and meet J Lo. <laughs> and with her. Okay, there it is. <laughs> she was also featured in a Super Bowl commercial for Sabra Hummus. Yo, I remember this commercial. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, boomer. Clearly, acting- oh, I forgot what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Boomer. Okay, Boomer. Okay, we're gonna get Charlie D'Amelio in on this hummus because not enough Gen Zers like hummus. Okay, so how do we get how do we get a young audience to like hummus? Let's pull Charlie D'Amelio and get her to hold like a carrot with hummus, like a raw carrot, and say, "Okay, Boomer." Thing is not her strong That's suit. That's golden, right? But the only talent that Charlie definitely be a hit with the kiddos. Charlie brought to the table was doing the renegade dance. However, she was incorrectly credited with creating the dance, as TikTok users referred to her as the CEO of Renegade, which would ultimately lead to her first major controversy. But first, a word from our sponsor, Underdog. I'm sorry, I'm skipping it. Source. The Renegade was created by 14-year-old choreographer Jaliah Harmon, who designed the dance in September 2019 and posted it to her Instagram, a month before Charlie recreated it on TikTok. I was happy when I saw my dance all over, she said, but I wanted credit for it. What added to the uproar was that Jaliah was a young black girl who many felt was being overshadowed in a market filled with white teenage girls like Charlie and newcomer Addison Rae, who stole her dance and profited immensely. Unless you have a copyright for the dance, then nobody can technically steal it. However, there are well, count- you should still give video credits. Countless examples dance of credits. influencers. Oh my god, the backpack kid. Who gained a career from creating one dance, but then never figured out a way to make money from other people doing the dance. Charlie, through a publicist, said that she- Yeah, but this kid didn't even come up- didn't he- did he come up with a floss? Isn't the floss just a modified version of the Carlton? One dance, but then never figured out a way to make money from other people doing the dance. Charlie, through a publicist, said that she was so glad to know who created the dance. I know it's associated with me, she said, but I'm so happy to give July a credit. Shortly after the New York Times article was published, Charlie posted a video to the TikTok performing the dance alongside Jaliah and Addison Rae. Now it's considered standard practice to put dance credit, or DC, then tag the creator who originally made it in the caption. Even when Charlie went on Jimmy Fallon to dance in front of millions, they DC'd everyone in the description below. I'm just glad young daddy Cack got their credit. Fortunately for Charlie, this controversy kind of went away quickly, because the world got hit with the pandemic and had bigger problems to address. By the end of March 2020, nearly the whole world was shut down, with hundreds of millions of people inside browsing the internet all day. TikTok gained 315 million new users. Fun fact, my brother was friends with the backpack kid at one point. Dude, I remember I went to track nationals one day, uh, my sophomore year. It was 2018 summer, and I was going to nationals in North Carolina, and the big hype around the event, like the big hype with nationals for track is you just get a New Balance backpack that's like custom that only kids that go to nationals get. And they had the backpack kid there, and they were like, the backpack kid's coming, ooh. And I was like, who the fuck is the backpack kid? Why the fuck? And at one point, I passed him, and I saw him doing this. Wait, what is there, like... And there was a bunch of kids crowded around him going, oh, 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 oh. And you know damn well, you know damn well people posted that shit and they were like, yo, today's a movie, bro, backpack kid for real, the backpack kid. So when Charlie officially became the number one most followed TikTok account on March 25th, it was huge news. She surpassed Lauren Gray at 41.4 million followers. TikTok having a rising star was crucial for their success. Charlie was their model example of how this app can change your life, but it just kept leading to more and more people asking, why is she number one? Why is she famous? It didn't help that she- Oh, it's so fucking- it's so fucking obvious, dude! Every video that she does, she doesn't speak a language, so anybody can, in the entire world can watch her. It's why Cobby Lame's so big, it's why Charlie's big, it's why every other fucking dancer's big. If you- the second you open your mouth and you say a word, you immediately mitigate your audience to the people that speak that language. So, yes, you're gonna have a wider audience array. Coupled with that, it's just fun, lighthearted dances. It applies to every audience age, right? If I'm sitting here and I'm rambling and cursing about niche uh, fucking topics, 
you already have to like my content. You have to speak English. You have to like the niche that I'm talking about. You have to understand the references that I'm making. So you fucking mitigate yourself. But if you just sit there and you do fucking renegade dances, you fucking do TikTok dances, you're going to be fucking open to a, a, a multitude of fucking people comparable to somebody who's doing niche skits or something like that. Same thing with, like, Kavi Lame does the Mr. Bean-esque videos where, like, he just fucking goes and then fucking shows why something's stupid. Charlie embarked on the most generic career. I'm not dissing him for it. I'm saying that's why he has an audience. He doesn't talk, so it doesn't, he doesn't need, anybody can watch him. His fucking audience demographic is probably not just the United States. It's probably all over the fucking world path as any other random LA socialite influencer. She started a podcast. The Ramble Podcast Network struck a deal with Charlie and Dixie to launch a series called Two Chicks. They lasted 27 episodes, but it didn't take off since the two aren't really that great at talking. Then Charlie and Dixie partnered with Morphe Cosmetics to launch a makeup line. Makeup reviewers on YouTube thought that the products were just average, specifically designed for young teenagers and just felt like a business play rather than an ambitious endeavor. Dunkin' Donuts offered a limited time drink on their menu called- I used to order the fucking Charlie, dude. Uh, that shit slapped. Yes, it was literally just kind of like a sweetened fucking coffee, but that shit was good as fuck. The Charlie. Then she collaborated with Hollister, designing a limited edition fleece sweatshirt. Charlie later appeared in Jennifer Lopez's music video for the single Pati Plus Lonely, and in Bebe Rexa's Baby I'm Jealous shortly after. Charlie's basic influencer journey was likely due to pressure from her managers letting her know she needed to be capitalizing on her moment. Wow. So what this no, it was them pressuring her, but it was also the management going, hey, I know you don't really do podcasts and you don't really talk in your videos, semicolon, however, comma, we have an offer lined up with an agency that's willing to pay you $10 million if you do 30 episodes of a podcast. Would you do it? Oh, uh, yeah. This is, is this a look at your 2021. This is the major things we're focusing on. So we have all partnerships. We have, you know, the different companies you're working with, like, you know, ring lights and starting a clothing company. So, and then you have books and TV shows. Most 16 year olds are not ambitious. They just want to hang out with their friends. So Charlie's managers essentially just tell her what career she is going to pursue because if the world is going to give you fame, why not make millions of dollars from it? She didn't need to prove herself in these industries. Her follower count was enough. It seemed like Dixie had to try harder to be recognized as a promising talent, so she wasn't just seen as Charlie's sister. There were days I would work all day and Charlie wouldn't do anything. I was like, how do you have all these followers when you're laying in bed all day? <laughs> Dixie made her acting debut in the Brat TV series, Attaway General. This show is essentially a low-budget Grey's Anatomy, replacing the adults with TikTok influencers who can't act, including Dixie despite- I, I remember watching an episode of this. It was bad. It was really bad. Um. I mean, I don't know if I don't know if Dixie necessarily did. A, she did. She did not do good. But I don't know if that's because she's a bad actor. Or because the whole show is just fucking stupid. Like the entire premise of the show was like just a horrible. Like it wasn't even even if you had good actors, it wouldn't be entertaining. By her theater background. Instead of incorporating real life scenarios to teach important values to children, Attaway General is filled with unrealistic scenarios where these teen volunteers find themselves assisting patients in critical conditions with severe medical injuries despite having no qualifications. They also casually walk around the hospital, in and out of patients' rooms, and randomly break into TikTok dances in the hallway. The show received terrible reviews, sitting at an abysmal 1 out of 10 on IMDb. Dixie 1 out of 10. Eek. the series after one season to focus on her music career, but her music career didn't really go smoothly either. Be Happy was Dixie's debut single, which focused on themes such as mental illness and depression. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta play Be Happy. Yeah, the VOD viewers aren't gonna hear this, or the YouTube viewers aren't gonna hear this either, but, you know, the VOD, uh, the Twitch viewer as well, so. I forget, I, I, I remember the name of the song. Oh my god. When it's like, sometimes I don't want to be happy. Wow, I remember that song. I fucking forgot about that. As she was hyping up the release, nobody had heard her sing before. She was notoriously a bad dancer. She's not a bad singer. And now a bad actor. Honestly. 
so nobody really knew what to expect. What they got was Dixie moping around her multi-million dollar LA mansion, asking everyone to I think it was just fucking, I think it was just shitty fucking lyrics. It was just shitty fucking lyrics, if I'm being real. The fucking singing was not bad. The, the voice was good, the lyrics were terrible. If you had a better song, she would have done fine. Let her be sad. It was your standard formulaic pop song with Rebecca Black Friday level singing. Despite the memes, it gained 100 million views on YouTube and charted in multiple countries, including New Zealand, Ireland, Canada, and Scotland. The song was later certified gold, prompting a remix featuring singer-songwriter Black Bear and rapper Lil Mosey. And although many expected her to tuck her tail and quit music, she did the opposite. Dixie signed a record deal with record executive L.A. Reid's label Hitco Entertainment. For the rest of the year, she released three more singles, Naughty List, a Christmas song with Liam Payne, One Whole Day featuring Wiz Khalifa, and Roommates. That that she one wasn't bad. I feel like that one wasn't bad. I feel like I've seen this fucking music video. Aoife and Roommates. She's consistently kept releasing music over the years, and her singing has gotten much better. Sugar-coated on my pain Couldn't help it I was just a kid You know, see, she's a good singer. It's just you need good, like, you need to have good lyrics for a song to not blow, you know? Unfortunately, her first impression was so mediocre that close-minded people probably don't want to give her music a second yeah. chance. Teenagers want independent- You gotta have a good opening with those things, especially if you're a um, social media influencer going to music, because that's like, it's stereotypically what every social media influencer does when they don't know what to fucking do. Especially TikTokers. It's like a TikToker gets a shitload of clout doing something, and they're like, ah, uh, I can't transfer this to YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat. TikTok is the only thing that I could do. Uh, what do I do now? Oh, I know. Let me make a stereotypical fucking song that could be clippable for TikTok again. But they still rely on she that. She should have just been a singer and that's it. Well, I mean, it's also, they, they blew up so young. I mean, like, even, I, I was probably, me, when I started doing social media, I think me and Dixie were the same age. And she blew up a little before me, right? And she's way bigger than me. But when you're that age, you don't know what track you want to go down. So it was like she just made a million different things and then kind of fucking chose what stuck. Make a song, Joe? Yeah, no, pass. I'll pass on that. Parents a lot for their comfort and advice. Oh, but LA is a very tricky place. Yeah, you're old as fuck now. JoJo, you're literally older than me. JoJo, if I'm old and I'm unk, right, If my as my, my viewers refer to me as, uh, you are also, you're like, you're basically like decrepit, you know? Like I'm, I started TikTok when I was 17, 22 now, just turned 22. What are you, what are you, 30, 35, Jojo? You sound like an unk though, and you don't, and you don't, I'm still hip and cool. Push it, hey, push it. Fuck, man. One up tagged. I rotated Kotu. Uh, one's gonna act there. My god. <laughs> Top of stairs, B Mace. Flash. <laughs> Neat. Bitch! Yeah, good aim. It is good aim. It is good aim. It is good aim. Nice. Good shit, Jojo. This doesn't show that you're hip and cool, though. You're playing CSGO. When did CSGO come out? Hmm, boomer game, boomer game, boomer game, buddy, boomer game, hop on Roblox, hop on Fortnite, CS2 though, mm, it's the same game, it's the same game, I need to see other JoJo clips, what is this? You let me go, you animal, what the fuck was that, I did not consent to that, stop! Okay! Whoa! You are a freak. Oh! Okay, dude. Alright. He did it again! <laughs> no! What fucking game is that? That's not Elden, right? Oh, it's Dark Souls 3. Uh, Mr. Well for the three. Hop that ass on Fortnite. Floating for the three. Dude, I'm on the train right now. I have a lesbian pin on my bag, and some kid just said, and then it cut off. What did they say? Low God for the three. Be Happy sounds exactly like uh, Red Dead Redemption house building song. Weed up for the three. First donor ever. Have a good day. Thank you. Chiron Fab for the sub. Mez for the sub. Skyfall for the two gifted. Charlie for the three. Is today a longer stream? I don't really know. 
I mean, we have these videos left. Uh, Polish for the sub. Uh, Polish for the sub. Cole for the sub. My friend and I are going to Point Pleasant next week for spring break. We can't wait to see you. Just kidding. Love the streams. Uh, Subway for the three. Ooh, Sniper and Long and Alicia for the sub. Squinting for the sub. I'm spaded for the three. I wanted you to choke the boxing guy. Mary for the sub. Floating for the three. Uh, all right. Not gonna lie, when I pull my hair back, I look old. You right. I don't think you look old. Right? But if you call me old, I'm gonna call you old. Because I think you look older than me. Like, if me and you stood next to each other, I think the average person would say I look between 18 and 25. And I think they'd say you look between 22 and 26. Like, I think you look two years older than me. Longing for the three. Just got off work. Glad I made the stream. Polish for the five. I have a hang picture of you on my wall. Cool. It sucked in. It's because you're short. I'm not short. Dude, you're like an inch taller than me. How tall are you, JoJo? Why are you beefing with me in my chat right now? Nah! Nah! Because oh, I'm short. Bitch, I'm 6'1". I'm 6'4". Yeah, and I'd fucking beat... I'd dust your ass in a 40. And I, <laughs> I'd fucking dust your ass in a 40. I'm uh, fucking 100%. Oh my god. Yeah, you're taller than me. Let's fucking go sport for sport here. He's stronger than me? I don't... I actually... I, I would say that's kind of up in the air. I don't know. You're fat shaming me. I'm not fat shaming you. I said I'm fucking more athletic. That's not fat shaming. I said I would beat you in a 40 yard dash. That is not, I'm not calling you fat. You're not fat. Floating for the three. I didn't mean to say that earlier. Anyways, he was reading a Bible verse to me. Like right now I'm watching stream and ignoring him. That's fucking wild. Weird champ. No way, buddy. Just typed weird champ. Joe's a kid because he played Roblox now. You guys peer pressured me into playing Roblox. I'm spaded for the three. Beefing in somebody's chat, boomer thing to do. Can you choke the boxing guy? Bro, spaded. If you ask me that one more time, I swear to God, I'm going to fucking time you out. I swear to God, bro. I'm not choking the boxing guy. What is that? It's like you're asking me so much. It's becoming like, why are you asking me so much to choke the fucking boxing guy? Why do you want me to choke the boxing guy? But being around my parents and my family keeps me so grounded and... and we still sleep home. We still, like, tell our parents if we're leaving. It's yeah. Like, Do you guys like that? Yeah. It keeps oh. us, like, sane and normal. Charlie and Dixie likely went into business with their family because, well, it'd be more comfortable to attack the crazy Hollywood lifestyle as a group. The D'Amelio family YouTube channel was launched, which would lay the foundation for their reality show. These videos only prove that- Dude, that's awful. 4,000 4, views for 1.5 million subs. That's like a YouTube shorts channel ratio. Which would lay the foundation for their reality show. These videos only prove that they were- You're my Jersey King. Love you, Joe. I love you too, JoJo. Sky for the three. Got my PC yesterday. I'm watching you right now, but I only paid 100 for it. It was $1,000 in parts. That's sick. Any recommendation for PC parts? Well, I don't know what parts you have. Or just any other ordinary family. It also sparked their first major controversy together. In November 2020, Charlie lost roughly 1 million followers after posting the first episode in a new series called Dinner with the D'Amelios. The series was intended to feature the family eating a meal with a different surprise guest. In the first episode, the D'Amelios sat down with James Charles for a paella dinner prepared for them by private chef Aaron May. The dish, traditional to Spanish culture, contains snails. Dixie picks up the snail, repulsed by the idea of eating it, and the chef tries to convince her to try it. This is what happened. Sometimes happens when... Don't be so dramatic. Yeah, excuse dude. yourself. Spitting it out like that is nuts, but not liking it isn't wild. Like her to be like, this is gross, is like her, it's just her fucking opinion. But like, did she just spit it on the floor? Oh. <laughs> oh, she actually threw up. Ew. Do we have any dino nuggets? Ew. While not liking snails is normal, it's obviously very rude to gag and make a huge Being filmed while you're eating a dinner, though, is just... I feel like it's such a weird type of video. Dinner with the D'Amelia. I was like, who would want to watch this? Scene. Imagine how the chef felt seeing that. Especially when later in the video, Dixie picks her nose and eats the booger. So they have their own personal chef and... Hey, 
it's your own, yo, it's your own, uh, it's your own, uh, you know, it's, it's your, it's your snot, right? I, please, it's not somebody else's. Charlie is asking for dino nuggets, the privilege this girl has. While their father continues to try and have an engaging conversation with James, the girls couldn't be less interested, picking and playing with their food. To cap it off, Charlie made a comment about her follower count that rubbed James the wrong way. Because imagine if I hit 100 mil a year after hitting mil. Was the 95 not enough for you? After the awkward moment, the girls try to close the show in the most unprofessional way ever. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching um, our YouTube video. Thank you so much for... Uh, okay, I'm just going to do it. Thank you for watching the first ever and most likely the last ever episode of Dinner with the Demilios. Kind of sad how James was scolding the girls for their manners and not the parents. James is nice to the chef. Any adult watching this knows that teenagers acting impolite or goofy- I forgot about that shit. I honestly forgot about that shit, dude. Tara, for the sub, I'm spaded for the three. Reason I asked you is because you told me to ask you another day, and then you got mad at me and made me sad. Bro, I just don't want to choke the boxing guy. You've asked me like fucking 50 times. I'm sorry I got mad at you. But every when you, whenever you... like I, I'm happy that you're sending me bits, right? But every bit down is, hey, can you choke the boxing guy? Like, really get into it? during a dinner is extremely common. It's under the circumstances that- Anyways, them not liking the dinner I don't think is absurd, but it's just like, you know, them being like, hey, this is fucking disgusting. Like, I'd be so like, nah, it's not for me, you know? Made it so bad. They have a celebrity chef, a celebrity guest, and are filming the entire experience to launch a brand new series for their own business. So you'd think these girls would be on their best behavior. The entirety of social media erupted calling the girls entitled. The parents were not disciplinary enough. And the usual, why did we make these people famous? Some people timestamp every single moment of the video criticizing a facial expression or movement from them being rude. Dixie- See, that's like nitpicking, bro. Like, that's just fucking- That's like pocket watching at that point. Tried to point. apologize and say that people were unfairly criticizing her based on an out-of-context 15-second clip, which was ridiculous because we had all of the context we need. Charlie also addressed the situation. We've since talked to Chef Aaron May and- like, he's not upset. He was in on the joke, so- 249 million fucking people? He was, like, not- It wasn't a thing where we were being blatantly disrespectful. It was more a thing, like, you joke around with your friends. Everyone on my team is- No shot. There was 250 million people. It's thousand? It says mil. Oh, it means thousand? Oh, is it- Oh, because it says Vivo. Yeah, somebody else recorded it. 244,000. I was going to say 244 fucking million people is a shitload. Okay. Tara for the sub. Friend and family. Like. Apparently, this was all just a skit for the video. Charlie addressed losing 1 million followers after her comment about wanting to hit 100 million followers in a year. When I had said about the followers thing, I genuinely just thought it would be so cool to hit a huge huge milestone a year after hitting another milestone i never meant for you guys to make it seem like you were numbers or did not mean anything and i now if she kept this statement short and sweet a lot of people would have considered this being a misunderstanding but she made a crucial mistake and began crying Yo, what if she what if she went down a different route and just was like fuck you guys you guys are fucking numbers you guys are fucking numbers. All you are is fucking numbers. You're like, you're like ants. You're just a pee in my fucking bowl, buddy. You're just a fucking pee in my bowl. There's a fucking hundred other peas in my bowl. You're one. You're not even one. You're like a fucking, you're like a grain of, you're like a grain of sand on a beach. Right? You're like fucking nothing. Right? You're a, you're the skin of my goose. No, that doesn't, that doesn't even make sense. Vindic for the sub, Sky for the five. Any recommendations at all? I'm new to PC stuff. I mean, you want to have a good CPU and GPU. Those are the big things that are going to fucking man your PC. But make sure you have a good motherboard to fucking uh, function all that shit. Power supply, don't cheap out on this stuff. Uh, a lot of pre-builds are just PCs in general. Like, have, like, the, the main things, like the GPU, CPU, maybe good RAM. But then they'll cheap out on fucking motherboard, power supply, the cords, all that shit. Lying on camera. Sorry. Seeing how people reacted to this, like... I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. Like, this is messed up stuff that people are saying. Like, people telling me to hate myself, people just, like, blatantly disrespecting the fact that I'm still a human being is not okay at all. 
The points she was making were valid. She didn't deserve that level of bullying, but many people look at crying as trying to take a situation and make yourself the victim and then try to gain sympathy. By doing this, I don't think crying necessarily makes you seem like a victim. I think crying is showing an emotional sadness to a situation. Like, I think maybe she went in a little much to it, but also, you know, at the time she was, what, probably like fucking 17, getting death threats and shit. I don't think anybody should have to go through that at any age, you know? So being upset in, in those regards, or even if somebody's like canceled and they cry in their response, I don't think that's necessarily making them a victim. I think it's the context in which they're crying. Dino uh, for the sub, Cyrus for the three. How would you feel if you have 250 million viewers, let alone 244K, how overwhelming that would be? Yeah. I'm not dissing Charlie. Polish for the three. I thought Charlie died. It also allowed for people to spin the narrative. It's manipulation or they're just crying, you know? I think people immediately look into that and they're like, oh, they're manipulating their audience or they're just crying, you know? Yeah, there would be people that, that could say, hey, hey, they're fucking manipulating their audience, right? And I think there are scenarios where that's true where somebody will fake cry. But if it's like a genuine they're upset, right, and they feel bad, some people cry when they feel bad, you know? I don't think that's necessarily them manipulating their audience it can be but it not it's not always that right just because somebody cried and manipulated somebody in the past doesn't mean that everybody's doing that you know doran for the three i was banned but i didn't say anything can you check my unbanned request uh... Your dono ID does not match uh, the username that you have. You have to let me know your user because I looked it up and it doesn't exist. With headlines saying, Charlie D'Amelio cries after losing 1 million followers, which we know is not why she was crying. But that just furthered the narrative that she is spoiled and famous for no reason. But ultimately, it didn't really matter because she became the first person to surpass 100 million followers on TikTok, which prompted numerous accusations that Charlie was buying TikTok followers because nobody still after all this- Yeah, but you pulled a video from some fucking jerk off that does the- Your fifth act wants to fucking eat toenails. Tag your fifth act. Did you see Charlie's buying followers? Ooh, comment on the video if your name starts with a fucking A. This time could understand why you would follow her. From day one, Charlie and the entire D'Amelio family's biggest conflict was the hate. If you have followers, you're not considered a person. You're just a thing that people get to judge and objectify and call names and bullied so it's like they don't expect Dude, but she brings up valid points like when people when people get internet clout or any form of fame you're automatically not as human as somebody else would perceive a friend or somebody they've just met in public it's a valid point right when somebody has clout you treat them either really good or really bad accordingly and not just like a person right like, you meet somebody in public, like, it's just not even just necessarily like parasociality, parasocialness or something like that. It's just how, how people perceive this individual, right? The things they say and all that. It's like you kind of talk to them like they're a robot or a Sims character rather than a person, right? Uh, Doran for the three. My username is Joe's Daddy. Yeah, I can't wait to see what this fucking message is. Uh, you said cocktail hour, but you spelled it like cock, C-O-C-K. You said boobies, uh, ASMR stream, cum dumpster, cock whore, uh, D's nuts, fuck yo mom, jack him off, shoot that ass, uh, do, I'ma do a lime. You're gonna say banned it to hurt us but if we all do being judged by the entire world is difficult especially when there isn't much to judge people usually acquire fame for somebody said but you're not a real person no, i am a real person right no it's just weird like i'm not gonna sit here and fucking yap because at the end of the day like the negatives of social media are still outweighed by the positives right like i i love my job i love being able to fucking do twitch streaming for a living entertain you guys do charity streams fucking help people out make people laugh it's fun right 
but there are negatives, right? I feel like people don't really talk about them. I don't talk about them because there's no point in talking about them. When you talk about the negatives, people do the negatives more, right? Because it's more, uh, it's like the same thing as telling like a kid not to fucking put his hand in the cookie jar. It's like when you tell them not to do something, they're going to do it. But, um, like her points are valid. I think I, like people criticizing her for that interview that she just did was, is wild. Miley for the sub. Possessing a skill or talent that is extraordinary, which makes people flock together to pay attention to that skill. You have to work, grind, show passion and dedication to a craft for years before anyone is going to respect you. They were given followers and fame and feel entitled to be given support every time they find a shiny new career they want to pursue. So people give hate to the D'Amelios because they get to waltz in any creative industry other people are dying to get into. They that get is, paid it, more it, for it, media. It's, no it's like a form of jealousy or envy, but it's like... Because they are potentially less qualified people in a lot of the realms that they're getting into and the people that are possibly more qualified or more entertaining aren't getting a shot but i don't think like charlie I, like i think dixie should be allowed to be in the singing realm and charlie should be in the dancing realm like it's it's fair mediocre work than experts in their field so it's not surprising the world wants to hold them to the same standard as experts since they are getting paid just as much as them charlie became a new york times bestseller after writing a book called essentially charlie the ultimate guide to keeping it real which covered topics of identity cyberbullying social media and body image as well as charlie's childhood and family life best-selling author voice actor professional dancer podcaster youtuber clothing designer makeup designer chef musician all within two years of being famous she tried everything, but was committed to nothing. So the only thing left to do was start a reality TV show. The D'Amelio Show premiered on Hulu in September of 2021 and was an immediate success. It became the most watched unscripted series among all first season titles in the genre on Hulu. Season one was them, unsurprisingly, becoming famous and dealing with the overwhelming amount of hate. They even put hate comments on the screen whenever the girls do anything, waking up in the morning reading hate comments, trying to predict the criticism they will inevitably get. This is just giving haters more power and will ultimately make them want to comment more. But this this is the only setback that the D'Amelios have ever faced in their life, people not liking them. Mariana Trimble of Washington Square News called the D'Amelio show a surprisingly- Yo Chase, thank you for the fucking raid, man. Mariella for the three. Remember when you died, we all thought it was AI. No time for the five since it's my birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, Polish for the four. Isn't it weird that some people can cry about low views while others uh, about losing their loved ones because of war? Well, I think it's all in the sense of perspective, right? Um, I think crying about losing views or low views is kind of wild, but um, if you get into the realm of, like, first world problems versus third world problems, like, if if you go through something and you're like, hey, man, I'm pretty depressed, right? Like, I'm kind of stuck in my life nine to five, and I'm getting kind of, you know, upset about it. And then your gut response is, well, people are fucking starving in Africa. It's just like, okay, well, then nothing fucking, you can't be upset about anything because nothing matters. You know what I mean? So your, your problems are based around the, the area that you're in, right? First world problems are not more valid than third world problems. Yes, obviously starving, people starving and people dying of dehydration and shit matters more. But if you're upset about something and somebody's immediate response is, well, there's people that have it worse. It's not always you know, a good situation. I will always say that like, hey, no matter what you're going through, there's probably people that are going through worse, but that's not a comforting thing. And it's not going to make you not upset, right? It not even necessarily comforting. Like if I'm upset about something and somebody's gut response is, you shouldn't be upset about this. There are people that are dying. Like that's not, it, it, that just means that, hey, nobody's problem matters unless you're going through the worst possible problem you could go through. And at that point, then you're getting into a one-up argument of who has a shittier life. And then it gets to the point of, well, I got abused when I was a child. Well, I uh, don't have any money and I'm homeless. Well, I actually uh, went through this. Well, and then it just keeps getting to a one-up argument of who lived something worse, right? R. Hanley for the sub. Obviously, some problems, like if somebody's bitching about low views and crying about it, that's fucking nuts. But, you know, if you're in a situation where... 
you're going through something and somebody's like, hey, there's people that are dying, that doesn't necessarily invalidate your issue. Really humble look at TikTok's most famous family. You may be shocked to find that you have more in common with celebrities than you thought. Well, they were a normal family for 20 years and famous for two years, so it's not that surprising to think they are just like everyone else. But season two took a weird turn. They documented Charlie's new burning passion to pursue a music career. Music was the outlet for Dixie to break away from just being Charlie's sister. And since Charlie was speed running every career path, you would think they would just let Dixie be the singer. But to make it worse, they lied to Dixie for months, claiming that Charlie was at acting class when she was getting singing lessons. So when they broke the news, Dixie that is like low key fucked up. Dixie wasn't happy. I was caught off guard and then expected to be like, oh my God, this is so perfect. You know what? Why don't you put this song on my album? We could do it together. Like that's how they wanted me to react. And I'm like, guys, no. Charlie did end up releasing a couple songs that saw moderate success, but as a shock to nobody, she doesn't seem committed to that career path either. We also see even more pressure from managers for Charlie to pursue business ventures. Right now, my skin is like kind of not. Bro, I just wanna, I just wanna make money and do social media and entertain people, and then when I'm done, I wanna open like a bar. I don't know why this is getting to like a, hey, you need to be a an all-time singer or a fucking uh, a, a world-class writer or an actor. Dude, just fucking do what makes you happy, you know? Obviously, you want to make money, right? And I'm, I'm sitting on this pedestal as a fucking Twitch streamer that's like, oh, I get to fucking do this as a living. I know, right? Uh, but I'm saying like, you don't have to, you don't have to be a fucking doctor or uh, a fucking writer, or a fucking singer, right? You could do something that you enjoy, right? Obviously, you want to make money from that, but you are not. You shouldn't sit, sit there, even with Charlie and them. Like, I don't know why she's ping-ponging through these massive ideas. Like, why can't she just do TikTok, maybe make YouTube videos, and then do whatever the fuck she wants on the side? It's like her management or her is having this, like, weird fucking emotion that she needs to fucking accomplish all these things in life. Dude. Like, when I'm done social media, I'm going to open some sort of business. Do I know what the fuck that is? No. But am I going to get into a realm that I think I could make money and also possibly have fun? Yeah. Right? And I have the fucking privilege of being able to make money doing something that's very entertaining and fun. Right? But not everybody has that. But alternatively, the people that have it especially shouldn't be forcing themselves to go into alternative career paths that they don't like. Right, A lot of people that don't have money are doing jobs that they don't want to do because they have to. But she's in a realm where she can do whatever the fuck she wants. Why is she making herself get through these careers that she hates or potentially doesn't want to do? Santos for the sub. Like If, I, if, you're, if you have $100 million at your expenditure, you could literally have any job you want. been the best, so I feel like just getting my skin fixed because it's like really bad right now. And I don't think it's fair of me to be like... Use my skincare ones. That's not what I want. I feel like a fraud and I don't enjoy feeling like that. She also appeared in Dancing with the Stars, which was the first time a business venture made sense. And actually, Charlie and her partner Mark Ballas won season 31. The other main theme about season two was how Dixie was in a toxic relationship with her boyfriend Noah. How many times have you guys quietly separated? <laughs> and gotten back together <laughs> over the last year. However, season three gets even darker, starting with their father talking about the family's goals for this season. Goals for this year, I would say what our goal is every year, to do no harm to our family. Then they go on to make an entire season about Dixie and Charlie hating each other. You guys need me. Like, you act like you don't. I don't need you. What? What? You too. And you can find bro, I'd move out. I'd fucking move out. I'd just stop doing all of this, bro. What? Like, why are they on the reality? I don't know if this is, like, fake beef, but, bro, if my fucking sister, like, if Charlie's my sister and she said that, I'd be like, da, bye. Right? If I'm Dixie, my sister's like, hey, I don't need you. I'd say, oh, that's chill. I'll take my fucking 30 mil cut and fucking skedaddle. Right home, you can walk. Oh, look at a puppos. Walk home, you can find another room. Okay. Who? Anyone else? I have Uber. Great. This was just what we see on camera. 
Charlie says it's even worse off camera. Like, she doesn't really see how she could even, like, be the problem. Like, the cameras see a mild version that, like, no one actually sees how it is, like, all the time. I am her human punching bag. Now, it is important to recognize this is reality TV, and who knows how much of it is scripted. Since their careers are very boring, the show producers need menial drama to spiral into something bigger so they have a storyline. MTV producers purposely antagonize- Yeah, because they can't be like, all right, we're waking up today and we're going to go film a fucking Chipotle ad, and then I'm going to make a TikTok, and then I'm probably going to sit and watch Hulu. Organize Ryan Sheckler on his show to get him to cry and lash out which led to him developing an alcohol addiction. Mark and Heidi are not stepping in because if the sisters aren't fighting, the show is just them making mediocre music and complaining about hate comments. With that being said, it does seem like Dixie has genuine disdain for Charlie. This wouldn't be the first time Dixie plays the I'm better than you because I'm older card. I get like for you it must be really exciting because like I always came in first and like yeah. now you finally have your time to shine. No, I think it's so cute that you riding on my coattails like really worked out for you. No, I mean like that was your whole life. I mean two years compared to 18, it's like really different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, it's reality TV, so we have to take this with a grain of salt, but kind of seems like this family is destroying itself. I but feel like they're, they're fucking competing for no reason. Why? Just because you're sibling doesn't mean you have to be better than your sibling in the same career path or career path that they're in. Just do what the fuck you want to do. You're just related. That doesn't mean you're competitors. The interest in the D'Amelios is drying up because they're just a normal, pretty non-problematic family, which for the sake of humanity is great, but for entertainment, it's stale. All of their controversies are nothing compared to most celebrities, which again, that's a good thing. The Kardashians maintain their fame through calculated publicity stunts, drama, sex tapes, contractual relationships with men who are A-list celebrities, having children. Reality TV is a soulless industry. Nobody's life is interesting enough to be on display like this. So you either have to intentionally create conflict or your show gets canceled. We usually deal with celebrity nonsense because they offer something of value in return. Kanye continuously disappoints his fans, but he has created so much great music that they will block out his antics and praise his art. Similar things can be said about Shia LaBeouf or even Bam Margera. Even though the D'Amelio controversies are small, and Charlie is pretty unproblematic, most people don't rush to her defense because she is known for TikTok dances and brand deals. Nobody's gonna be like, I'm gonna ignore the Charlie controversy because- Yeah, but if Char- if it was like- if it was like a fucking famous rapper that had the drama that Charlie had, nobody- it wouldn't even gain traction. Just because it's like, the more you provide, the less people care about certain things. She drinks Dunkin' Donuts coffee so well on her TikTok. It seems like this family is trying to force themselves to be something they are not, and it may be destroying them. Forbes reported Charlie made 17 million in 2021, and their family oh company God. is worth 100 million dollars. They have totally. Thank you for the five gifteds. Have won the American dream. The already rich family got even richer. These days, Charlie's comment section is flooded with people who say she fell off. She doesn't get millions of views and likes anymore. First it was famous for no reason, now it's not famous enough. It's never going to end. Ignore the hate comments. Why let Hollywood destroy your family for their entertainment? That's facts. Wow, that was fucking- that was Gaslighting. Honestly, dude, that guy was spitting. Alright. Hold up, chat. I gotta piss, and then we'll watch fucking one more video here. Uh, we're gonna have to fucking do a mods do a poll between the cruelest episode of Deal or No Deal or every drug is complained in ten minutes. I have to take a fat fucking piss. Count me down thirty seconds.
walking into the bathroom, my dog's just drinking out of the fucking toilet, bro. I've never seen that in my entire life. Never seen that in my entire fucking life. I was like, I was like, what are you doing? She fucking looks up at me. I'm like, what? You fucking stop. She has water in her bowl. I'm like, what is she fucking drinking out of the toilet? I mean, it wasn't like piss water. Like, I flushed the toilet, but I'm like, fucking stop. I fucking push her out of the bathroom. I'm like, what are you doing? Do y'all's dogs drink out of the fucking toilet? I've never seen that. I've never seen her do that. People voted for the drug one. Bro, what the fuck? I'm sitting there like, what the fuck? She's like, her, her mouth's dripping and shit. She's like, and just staring at me. I'm like, what are you drinking out of the fucking toilet? Why does my dog drink out of the toilet? The water's cold and continually refreshed every time it's flushed. Bruh. So it's colder, so she likes it more? Ew! Every jug explained in 10 minutes. Lock in. Cannabis, commonly known as marijuana, is a psychoactive drug derived from the cannabis plant. It is often consumed for its relaxing and euphoric effects. While some use it recreationally, others may use it for medicinal purposes. Can you guys hear it? I feel like this video is fucking low as shit. Potential pain relieving and anti-nausea properties. Alcohol is a legal and widely consumed psychoactive substance. It depresses the central I feel nervous like people system, don't... leading to effects. People don't really see alcohol as a drug. And, like, never really think about the fact that it fucking is. It's quiet. This is all that I can turn it up. I've turned it up all the way. Uh, same thing with, like, caffeine. Caffeine, fuck, I mean, obviously tobacco. But, like, alcohol, people are just like, oh, yeah, no, it's just alcohol. But it's still a fucking drug. Such as relax and it's a worse drug than most drugs that are illegal. ...and lowered inhibitions. However, excessive alcohol uh, not most, some. consumption can result in serious health issues, including addiction and liver damage. Nicotine is a stimulant found in tobacco products, primarily cigarettes. It is highly addictive and stimulates the release of dopamine. I feel like it's not primarily cigarettes anymore. I feel like nicotine's just in fucking vapes. I feel like people vape more than smoke. What are the statistics on that? Do you think more people vape or smoke cigarettes now? Still cigarettes. Worldwide cigarettes. I think in the U.S. it might be leaning towards vaping. Do people vape or smoke cigarettes more? 4.5% of adults were current e-cigarette users. 29% were also current cigarette smokers. 40% were former cigarette smokers. And 30% had never been a cigarette smoker. I feel like that's no... There's way more than 4.5% U.S. adults are current e-cigarette e smokers. Dude, way more people fucking smoke. Oh, it's here it is. 15, ages 15 to 19, 20% have vaped and 11% have smoked uh, cigarettes. So about half as many people smoke cigarettes. For in half. the brain, leading to a sense of pleasure and relaxation. Smoking is a major cause of preventable diseases like lung cancer and cardiovascular issues. Heroin is an illegal opioid derived from morphine. It induces a powerful euphoria and pain relief, but its use can lead to addiction, respiratory failure, and other severe health problems. Heroin abuse has significant social and health implications. Meth is a potent central nervous system. God, this is so boring. I, I thought this would be a much more interesting video. And I also thought that it wouldn't be like I'm um, listening to him from fucking 10 miles away. Blah, blah, blah. All right, we're not going to watch the deal or no deal video, but watch something else. We'll watch something else here, chat. Your friend's dad, an Almost Friday skit. Love these guys. Lock in. Why don't you just ask your dad if we could have a few of his beers? I don't think he would care. Okay, dude, if I ask him for beer, he's going to want to come hang out in here. It's free beer, Will. Who cares? Just ask. See what he says. All right, I'll ask. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so what, what are you guys doing later? You going to a party? Nope, we're just gonna... Fucking 50 year old dad just just broing out with like the young guys. Hang here tonight, so. Friday night and you're not going out? Come on. When I was younger, after the football games, we'd go out to these parties in the woods, if ever, 
anyone from the rival high school showed up, we would all surround them, and we would be like, fucking get in the hole, and they would get in this hole that we dug. Put them in a, a hole? We fucking like spit on them and then like piss on them and they would be like clawing to get out, but they couldn't. It's like a 12 foot deep hole. Okay, wait. 10 is 10. <laughs> Yo, that's actually a fucking dad story though. Holy shit. That's like some shit your grandpa would say. Yeah, we would like dig a hole and like put them in it and then they would, they like couldn't leave. Is categories. Like fucking random ass dad lore. What? Like you put people in holes and they and you would pee on them? Yeah. That's like fucking. It's like actually s scary as shit. So you guys should invite some girls over. Maybe I, I don't think. But so. But no funny stuff, okay? This is a home. This is not a hostel for group sex, oh, right? Man. So this fucking umpire makes a bad call at one of Will's Little League games. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. I'm totally cool if you guys want to do whatever. I would be honored if you guys had your first sexual orgy in my house. I follow him to the parking lot. I put a geo tracker on his car. I was your age when I- <laughs> I smoked weed with my dad. Why do we search videos? Because the fucking drug videos sucked. Wait, you smoked weed with Grandpa? Did coke with him, too. Son, what? You know that, right? Now nah, that's actually dad lore, though. That's actually dad lore. Like a what? When? <laughs> Sitting there like, oh, no, it was like 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I was alive. <laughs> yes, I know that. You know, I love you, sport. Okay, thank you, Dad. And I would support you having group sex. The second I did that first line, I was like, yeah. This is dark. And we would yell, like, the craziest things. Yo, I feel at like this is a chill dad, though. You know? I feel like he's he's annoyed by it, but this is kind of fucking hilarious. The, the, the stories are facts, though. Just constantly rambling. That's more of, like, a grandpa thing, though. Just nonstop stories. It's like, holy fucking shit. Can we have a break here? It's like I'm getting punched in the face with fucking... Oh, uh, when I was a kid. Nah, when I... When I was a... Fuck. You want to hear a funny joke? Oh my! Oh, I can't. Let's show a glass of water. Oh. It's like you're fighting for your life. There just keeps bringing up new stories. You're like, yeah, that's fucking fun. Yeah, that's so cool. And I'm like, we'd be like, I'm gonna fucking kill you, or like, I'm gonna rape you, and they would be like crying because they thought they were gonna die. Like, they thought they were not going to see their parents again. If you want, guys, just rent a porno on the cable. But only Will can jack off here, okay? I don't know if Susie <laughs> finds me attractive anymore. My crew back in the day was Doug Finch, R.I.P. Alan Tratt, R.I.P. Thinking about getting an, an earring and Tony Moretti, R.I.P. And we were all dating one of the Monroe sisters. I don't know if that'll do anything for me, you know? I get it. I've been there. Get a bunch of guys together. Watch a porno. We all break off into our own rooms and jack off into a condom. A guy I work with? <laughs> Killed a guy in a bar fight. Why are you telling that story? I was there. I don't go to your house. And I don't jerk off into condoms in your rooms. So I would hope that you would show me the same respect. As soon as the guy hit the ground, I was like, whoa, that guy is dead. I can't find any of the Monroe sisters on Facebook. That's weird, right? If you really got a bust, the woods are that way. Why would all four Monroe sisters block me, you know? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. SHUT THE FUCK UP! I'M KILLING SOMETHING DOWN HERE! Oh. Remember. I want you guys to know, you guys... You guys all got life Dude, these life. videos are so fucking entertaining. These videos are so fucking entertaining. The balls. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. This time is yours. 
need some help. Oh, no, I'm okay. He just, he just airdropped me a picture of a naked lady on a motorcycle and said, did you ever see anything like this? <laughs> he is so cool. cool. Very cool. So fucking cool. Dude, I would die laughing if I got an airdrop from my friend's dad of just some naked woman. I'd be like, dude, who, who the fuck is this guy? You know what? Yeah. I guess he is pretty cool. That's my dad. That's my dad. Oh my god, that was funny as shit. Floating for the three. My grandpa just casually mentioned one day he did drugs with two members of the Beatles. Dude, see, that's you'd be just like, what do you mean? And they just say it so casually. Yeah, you know, I killed a guy in 08. What? What? Yeah, he pulled a gun on me and then we got into kind of like a kind of a kerfuffle and I ended up stabbing him. What? We've just never, we've just never, you know, talked about that before. Uh, Polish for the three. That's about, nah, I can't even read that number. Adult people that smoke e-cigs. Uh, Moxlin for the sub. Totally for the fucking five gifted. Uh, Coog for the sub. Oh, but chat, we're going to call that there. That was W fucking stream. W stream in the chat. Hope you had fun watching. I had a fun time streaming. We had a great chat, great audience today. A lot of people in the fucking stream. Thank you to everybody that follows, sub, donor, etc. I'm going to be posting on the YouTube literally, like, right now. Hold up. Let me, uh, fucking check this. Um. Um. We'll post this video. Uh, but if you have any videos you want me to react to or games you want me to play, exclusive point Discord. Uh, mod spin the Discord link. If you have any videos you want me to react to or games you want me to play, send those there. Video slash tab, game slash tab. So I find most of the videos that I watch the games that I play. Uh, so if you have any videos uh, you want me to watch or games you want me to play, send those there. Very much appreciated. Even if I don't watch it or uh, play the game, uh, I would appreciate y'all's suggestions. Just post it on YouTube. Um, so go watch that. You know, I'll be live tomorrow, 2 p.m. EST. Uh, maybe a little bit earlier, but probably 2, PS uh, 2 p.m. EST. We're going to be doing um, fucking VR. we got a lot of VR games we're going to be playing. Sunday's going to be Reacts. Maybe some Philosophy Reacts. Monday, we're going to be doing uh, the MC Horror Mod and Switch Sports. Tuesday's going to be South Park Snow Day Drop. So we're going to be playing that. Uh, I will be live on Tuesday. Wednesday's going to be Horror Games. Thursday's going to be... Fortnite and then games with uh, other streamers probably. And then Friday's Reacts. Next Saturday's Block Wars. But yeah, hope you all had fun watching once again. I had a fun time streaming. Uh, and I will see you guys later. Uh, who do we want to raid? Um, uh, who do we want to raid here? Who do we want to raid here? Let's raid. Um. <laughs> Let's raid Angry Ginge. I haven't seen... I haven't rated that kind of fucking forever. Let's rate him. But yeah. Hope you all had fun watching. Oh, okay. uh, I had a fun time streaming. And I'll catch you all tomorrow.